What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pass the Barb. I'm your host, Ryan Pinkala. Today is March 4th, and uh, we're coming to you live. We got two, two Pass the Barb co-hosts coming in today, and uh, joining me, sicker than a freaking dog, is our boy, Adam Bartuzic. I am ill. <laughs> <laughs> Rain or shine, this man he shows up rain or shine. Yeah, How just just doing? shoved a bunch of Tylenol and Mucinex down. I got a nice uh, nice pint glass filled with Pedialyte, mm. and uh, yeah, what here we are. What flavor you running there, bud? I think it was grape. I think that's the only one they had in there. What do you I mean, What do you got? What do you think you got? Uh, I don't know. It's not COVID because I can taste. Stuff, oh, so. don't say oh. that on here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't know. I just came down the last few days slowly, but surely. I don't know. He's got the so, sickness, hope, folks. Yeah. He's hopefully the, I just wake up jealous. tomorrow and it's better, but I haven't been sick in a while. So this, this hasn't been greatly enjoyable. Glass half full though. At least you're getting sick kind of, I mean, in the dead period between winter and summer if there's a time to be sick i'd like to be sick now opposed to like the fourth of july or midwinter i agree i agree that's valid. Yeah. that's valid true and bring sure, it up bring it up, the, that. bring it up the bottom of the screen mr sam Sobe. howdy ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome back to another episode of pass the barb and um we just we want to reach out our gratitude again and thank you so much for uh, making us the number one outdoors podcast in the world. I don't know what week this is, but we've been holding this slot. I at least know on Spotify and I want to say Apple music for at least eight, eight or nine weeks. Now we're number one outdoor podcast. And that's Some because you say guys that's unprecedented. Yeah. Really? Yes. I mean, yeah. A, a century belt for podcast per se. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we just want to say thank you. We've got an awesome episode tonight and we're kind of introducing a few new segments and getting a few new characters on here too. So it's, it's going to be good. So it's I awesome think the, the one, the one thing we need to tell the people though, and we a hundred percent forgot this and I just realized it wasn't in the agenda coming into this now. So we need to make a note. Um, we do have a winner of the giveaway of the drunk wood thing for Ooh, our, excellent. uh, subscribers who it is i don't know right now because i'm lying to you we don't have a giveaway winner so oh, we have to pick it one will yet be posted it. on social media it will be so, posted right. on social media you know? so that's where you'll find it <laughs> i have a sidebar so on there's, that. there's there's a little thing of like shit we forgot so we should probably remember that that just kind of like hit me in the face so there, also there drunkwood a... uh texted me oh. and he said it's not drunk wood inky um it's drunk wood in KY, drunk wood in oh. Kentucky. Oh, and I was the like, more you know, oh, huh? yeah, I that was like, sense. that makes sense. Yeah, so he's still drunk wood inky to us in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> there is a winner, so stand by. And yeah, yeah there's a winner for, for something else too. I just, oh, god dang, it's almost slipped my mind. It's right here. I think last podcast somebody said. The ice would be gone on Lake X, the lake I live on, by March 1st. And I'm here to tell you, you were much closer than I thought. I thought it would be actually way farther. But the ice actually completely went off yesterday. It was 70 degrees. The wind was blowing. There were white caps. And on my lake in southern Minnesota, there was a Ranger 621 that actually backed in and went out Incredible. fishing in their boat. And the day before, there was the south end. There was some ice on it. So it was close. But, Adam, you owe me a case of cold beers. It would have been really cool if um, there was a verified picture on the date or something. Steph, proving Steph me was wrong. home. Steph was home. Well, put it this way: there was a. Do you have a cell phone? Thursday with. I was I was up north, but Steph was home. <laughs> does she have a cell phone? She does. God, she does, and she. But you posted me. a picture on the Thursday of ice on the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. Which there was would have been February 29th, correct? It was you were you were. So off where was it at March first? Where was it March first? Nobody knows. The, the bay by the access was wide. You open said March you were up 1st. north all weekend, weren't you? So like, did you just get home yesterday and be like, "Wow, look, it's open." I wonder when that happened. I think kind of digging yourself a hole here. I so. say there's light. no picture of when it since happened. the salt level appears to be fairly high in this conversation. Maybe you should just double down on something else, there, big dog. Huh? I'll Ooh. still give you a case of beer. I mean, that's whatever, Ooh. but. But I, I just would have liked to see the picture. You sent me a picture the day before of it literally starting to open up, and then I never heard anything for five days. And I was like, this motherfucker <laughs> just isn't going to send me the picture when it's I open. was gone. I was gone. 
All right. But anyway, know. let's let's, let's jump into it. Do we jump into current events? Yeah. What what have you been up to? So how is how is how is things going? Things have been going good. I've been kind of making my last stand as far as ice fishing goes, and I think I might be done. I've um, always said that like seven times. That's the last three podcasts we've been like goodness. I'm done. <laughs> we we have. We I feel like all three of us have made our last stand multiple times ice fishing and we just kind of keep going and keep going like i just saw last week after you guys um you guys meet up in the fundraiser you guys took panger out burbot fishing and that was kind of my last stand too this weekend i went i went pout fishing and if people don't know what that is if they're far away an eel pout is a beautiful crazy creature adam and i grew up chasing them too even way back in the day before it was cool and it, it yeah we got into some and we had some really late nights. We, we just took, it was beautiful weather, but we took like 20 mile an hour winds in our face till 3 AM multiple nights. And, um, I'm, we had fun, but I am excited that the ice season is kind of done. Was there a bit of a harvest or what? No, there actually was heed me. You (sighs) get, we discussed this. I know Adam, I mean, not Adam. This guy's Ryan. really following through on coming through on things he said he was going to do. Right Ryan King is the exact outdoor cook. I'm writing this down, and I watched him write it down. Where's that paper? I it was you literally have. you and like three other people. Cole Pin's dad and and one of my other neighbors were like, you know, if you get into some pulp, bring me some. And I like so I made this promise not to you, but to three other people. Night one of pout fishing, we're on Gull Lake, and I hit like some of my OG spots, some of Hayes' OG spots. Um, and he, we like, you know, Hayes was kind of has the ADHD with, with the live scope, you know, spinning. He's like, there's no fisher. There's no fisher. I'm like, you know, it kind of doesn't work like that unless they're spawning. Hayes, like such a massive break. Like I think we kind of have to fish it through, you know, they, they might not be here right now. They they're always cruising, but he was like, I don't know. He was kind of against it. We ended up fishing these spots, fish one spot all the way to 11 o'clock goose egg fish go to the other side of the lake make a long walk fish another spot till 3 40 in the morning goose egg and then the two days after that we ended up getting into them uh on a different lake and it was like yeah when i first had them in my hand i was like spare i just spared them i didn't want to cut one i didn't want to kill one because i was just happy to see one so they got they got spared someday 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 we'll put the knife in i'm sorry (laughs) we just had such a good conversation about it i know and i I, I thought we were in a good place i'm about to harvest as well i really am i'm I'm nothing against it and bourbon are delicious fish i just was like when we finally saw the first one after day two i was like spared they were pretty though i did the pictures you get you had were incredible it was a good trip overall though so what have you been up to rye Dude, I was up up fishing this weekend with Bart, and we had a big big crew of people, which was pretty fun. Uh, we did a bunch of ice fishing. We did a bunch of cooking, which was super fun. Dude, always like cooking for big groups is fun. Burnt the absolute shit out of my hand. You can see that. Oh, what'd you chef up? Uh, well, that the casualty of that was making flatbread pizzas. Oh, and sounds we, good. Though. So the the setup is that we're trying to do all this stuff like right around sunset because like obviously it looks dope and there's zero lights on the outside of the cabin that we were at yeah so i was like doing it in the dark oh and put my hand down on a cast iron griddle (laughs) and it dude it sizzled so loud so like i was putting like bacon down dude and i was like that's bad almost like you heard it before you felt it I did. I heard, and I was like, that's not, it's one of those ones where you did it for like a split second. And you're like, I'm going to regret this for like two to three weeks easily. Yep. <laughs> but it, su- it sucked. The food was incredible though. I think Bart can probably chime in. That that. Very good. We, we did that one night. So it was like that. I did like a wild game dinner one night. And then the next night we did a fish taco bar. Yum. And it was awesome. Like we well, knifed yeah. a ton of crappies and perch and they were awesome fish tacos. Super good. What was the yeah. ice report kind of way in the northern part of the state? We had a shitload. Dude, like Real 16 to 18 inches. I would have drove a truck around, no problem, to be honest. But we had Yeah, machine, there was an so. SUV on the one lake that we were on. But yeah, 16 yeah. to 18 inches, clear hard. Ice. How far north were you guys of the Twin Cities, you'd say? All Basically the way Canada. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. There so was a Canadian flag. Way. You could see Canadian flags. 
Yeah. Because in the Brainerd Lakes area, there was like not much. It was no, it was, like it was when kind of bad. I mean, like like you had mentioned, I went burbot fishing with Panger after our break your PB uh fundraiser and uh we were out that was i mean a week before you went basically and there was like 14 to 15 but even that night on our way in a bunch of it like we had to go over a crack that like was very sketchy that was not there earlier yeah so yeah that whole area i was like yeah i don't this isn't going to stay long but it was just where where we were has been like there was winter for a long time like we got up there there was five inches of snow they didn't have any like they didn't lose their snow pack until we left yesterday dang but we did yeah. do we seen two wolves up there that's so sweet super cool one was like we saw a collared wolf like right next to the it was literally right next to the door of the truck which was sick and then right when we were packing up to leave there was one on the lake right out in front of our cabin just on the ice in the middle of the lake that's so sweet. Which was sweet. I never seen one like out on the lake. Before. Was that right? Right after I left? You saw yeah, we were, yeah, we were we were just packing stuff up. Me and Logan were there. And then of course we're like, I'm just standing there like shooting the shit with them. And I look out and I'm like, dude, there's something like walking on the lake. So we kind of like walked up to the end of the point or whatever. And we were like, dude, that's Hunter P a wolf. Yeah. So of course I was like, Well, we should put the drone up, obviously. So we did, and we got a cool video of it. Oh, that's really? Oh, that we probably that. can never show. But <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> eh, so, whatever. so besides that trip, Adam, what have you been up to? Uh, yeah, we just did that trip. Other than that, we had the Break Your PB event, which was super fun. Thank you to everybody who came out. Um, the only real, I mean, other than that, I'm picking up my boat. Uh, I think next week it's getting rigged right now. Um, other than that, I just I had two notes of things that were going on that. I was like, oh, we got to touch on these really quick. But just a callback of uh, episode we were talking about before. We never knew if it was actually going to happen until it did. But we found out late last week, the state records did get reset. They it did, did actually happen. That, yeah. So that was that's actually super cool. So I'm really pumped about that. So there'll be a bunch of guys uh, hopefully looking for a state record smallmouth. Uh, the state record black crappie got reset. I'm pumped. I, I haven't looked into the full details, but I know the black crappie, they put a minimum of two and a half pounds on to register it, which cool. I think is really good. So I hope yeah. like this small mouth, they probably put a, I don't know, like a six and a half, something like yeah. that on there. Yeah, just to keep the like flood of submissions from coming in. of people. Yeah, like, exactly. Look. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that was super cool. So I thought we had to bring that up because that's like, I think mega exciting. I mean, I, yeah. For me, anyways, there's a chance first month or two this year, I might just go like state record chasing for a bit. It could be kind of fun. Um, I did have a few people message me when we talked about it on a pod before. So it'll be uh, when we were talking about them resetting, they were like, you guys like what you did with the one. They were like, you guys should do some type of thing with that, with those species. And like, we should. And I was we like, should. that'd be really fun. I would, I would potentially do that. Go try to catch a shovel nose or some bullshit that I have no idea what I'm doing, but it qualifies. Dude, we we need so. worms. <laughs> yeah, we it'd need be worms. the only time you could ever film this series, so it'd be kind of cool to do it. Is there is there any other odd like what about like the rock bass or the bull? I didn't, I didn't, I haven't looked super into the details, few. so we can talk about it again. But there is like a dozen or so more that that all got reset. I just know the rock bass and the or, <laughs> rock bass i know the black crappie and the smallmouth are for sure two of them um yeah, that's so awesome. that's super cool uh the other thing i was gonna tell you and i ryan didn't even hear about this one so this is good um i found out about this when we were at the break your pb fundraiser i plugged it into my notes so that i wouldn't forget it but this is timely and it's a good one so Sobe, you know uh joe wires yeah Grew up right next to you, neighbors, right? And he's a yeah. co-angler for uh, my Bass Nation Club. And we've known Joe our whole lives. My parents are like best friends with his I used parents. to babysit him. Yeah, yeah. Grew up right across the road, like fishing together all the time. So Joe moved out to Colorado this past year. And um, he, uh, I don't know, a few like clam Yukon houses ago or something, he bought one from me uh, from like, get a new house every year being on the pro team and everything sell them super cheap to my friends so i'd sold joe one for very cheap and he moved out to colorado and 
his dad was talking to me and my dad at the fundraiser and was telling us that he had taken it out there so that he could go ice fishing. And uh, one day he was out at the apartment and he set it up outside to like dry it out and everything uh, yeah. so that, you know, it could go ice fishing, set it up, nothing, nothing wrong or whatever. It goes back inside. He's like, all right, I'm going to come back out and grab it. Well, the ice house is stolen now. And he's like, what Shut the up. hell? Like, I just flip up this Yukon ice house. Like, what are, what are these people doing? There's like not, there's not that many ice fishermen out here. Like, who would be so, like, oh, I'm going to take so that ballsy. ice house. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, I'm about right? to boost that. <laughs> yeah, or Denver, wherever he is. He's in a very popular area yeah. of like hipstery Colorado. And uh, so he calls the cops to report it as stolen. So he can be like, where's this ice house? Like, I would like to get it back. And uh, the cops tell him, oh, we have it. And he's like, what? And they're like, yeah, we confiscated it. We thought it was some sort of new homeless shelter. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God, dude. Oh, my gosh. And and was he like, was he <laughs> they like. They took it no. off the street because they thought it was a homeless shelter. That's incredible. <laughs> So he got it back. That's a he, I, I believe he got it back. Yes. That's <laughs> actually like, incredible no, that's story. A, no, so that's, that's how popular house. ice fishing is in Colorado. Right yeah. There. That can't be a real person's. That's that's definitely somebody. <laughs> yeah. I up. thought, I, I thought I that we'll was great. That. They just Unreal. cop rolls by these homeless people. They're getting so <laughs> ingenuitive. It's yeah. an encampment. Look at, yeah. 900 <laughs> denier fabric. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Swivel living like a fucking king. <laughs> Unreal. It's the, it's the XL. It's the XL as well. Look at this guy. <laughs> Stunting. <laughs> right. Even oh, got a oh tub in it. You can just tow it around. There's two seats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's even got a packable cover. I'm surprised they figured out how to take it down, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That fast. How do you that's the thing? I would have loved to have them like look at it. Like you can see them looking around, like, all right, like how do we <laughs> I got a how runner do, yeah, kit on just it? Shoved it in the back. Yeah, that just came in. <laughs> that's that's not yeah. for it's got a runner kit. <laughs> yeah. Shut it down. Yeah. High facts? No. Shut it down. <laughs> I figured uh I figured you guys would like that though. I thought that, that was good. a new one. I'm like, that's I haven't a good heard of story. That before. That's a good one. Hell yeah. Damn. All right. Well, we got we got a new segment we're gonna bring to you right now. We're debuting this tonight. Mm -hmm. So we got a new segment. This is called Fresh Meat. The goal of this is to bring somebody in, recurring guest. Uh, of you know, fans of Past the Barb have spoken. We do have some people that uh, pretty damn popular with the Past the Barb fans. So we're bringing you one tonight, and uh, we're just gonna just see what everybody's been up to, get a little catch catch up, and uh, you know, I think I think this is gonna be a fun one. We'll bring these people back again and again. So tonight we got. The Mad Town Mama coming to you from Wisconsin, Maggie Carcello. Mad up, Town girl? Mama, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the that. Mad caught, Mama. That caught me just as off guard as I'm sure it did you. <laughs> I love it. I I've been trying to figure out a good nickname, and I got it. The Mad That'll Town. I, love I wouldn't worry about it. How are I the kids it. doing these days? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, one cool thing we wanted to do with fresh meat was also just bring in somebody else because in case you guys get tired of listening to our three mugs, jibber jabber, we're bringing somebody in. We're going to ask them what's new with them, what they're excited about and spring. Talk about spring, Maggie. You've got a cold bush light out. You've got a Rappler hat on. Talk some, oh, fishing. Dudes. Talk some fishing with me right now in the Wisconsin area. Yeah. I mean, I'm in Southern Wisconsin, just South of Madison, and we have had I'm sure Midwesterners are sick of hearing this, but like we've had the wildest winter ever. We had no ice, no ice, no ice. It was driving me nuts. Um, I mean, Andrew and I were out in the boat catching bass in January, I think. Like, unreal. That's insane. When was and the then, last time you even went ice fishing? Well, that's that's where I'm getting it. It's crazy. So, like, we had no ice, warm, got really cold like that. Like, boom, super cold, below zero temps. Our lakes were wide open on Saturday, and by Monday, we had like eight, nine inches of ice. Really? Weirdest thing ever. We had safe ice for two weeks, and since then, it's been shit. Like, people are falling through. I love ice fishing, but not that much. I'm not a, yeah. I'm not a risky gal myself. So, I mean, yeah, we had safe ice for 
two weeks. Uh, I don't even know the last time. I just I went on a trip with Otter just recently, um, basically like Bart was saying, up to Canada. Um, but th- I think that's all she wrote for me for the year. We just had the boat out this weekend, catching some bays. What was yeah, the water? Such a bummer that you only got to ice fish for two <laughs> weeks. I feel so bad for you. I am not mad. Like I, I do, I do. I love ice fishing, but like doesn't you compare to, to leaning on them. It doesn't compare to <laughs> leaning on them with the long rods. No. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no. Uh, Sobe water temps, it kind of depended. Like main lakes were like 36, 38. And then when we would get back into some bays, we saw like 43. Wow. I think I think we might have saw like 46 in, in like the real, real shallow yeah. stuff. Sun was out. It was crazy. Was but yet, who oh, I, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that part. Um, <laughs> I got one of those little, little Rapala fish fish counters. Yeah. yeah. Clicked, clicked it twice. <laughs> Oh, yeah. did you see that? Oh, I didn't hey. even, I don't know. Did you just, How'd you do that? Yeah. I think you can do this too. Nope. Not on us. We suck. Oh, We're working work. through technology here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll get the anyway, guy in the back. Whatever on just that. happened there. Craig, really work on cool, that. And I don't know. You guys that... saw it though, right? We yeah, saw it. Yeah, we, saw it. We, got, we got all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a big promo for our YouTube channel, right, Maggie? If people want to see that, they need to go to our YouTube channel, pass the Yeah, bar. dude, do us a favor, smash that subscribe button. Thank you. Click the, you know, give us a like. Really, really supports us and yeah. helps us get out there and Co- just comment. Yeah, comment. yeah, we'll get that checked. Oh yeah, and comment. Right dude. Com- yep. Comment yeah. something. Yep. Comment a long thing. Maybe multiple Com- comments. Yeah. Um. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, we got your address. But either Perfect. way, you didn't get you didn't get skunked. You know what I mean? You got the no. goose out of the boat, and it's like you caught the first bass of the year. Are you kidding me? Usually we're driving trucks still on lakes, and you you right. open water long rotted a largemouth yeah. bass in Wisconsin. So that's yeah. freaking cool. Were there were yeah. there other awesome. boats out, or were you just like the lone wolf? We saw a couple, but I mean there there wasn't much. But this was the this was the goonie part. We were so we were fishing fishing the Madison Chain of Lakes, and uh, you run a river to like get from one lake to the other pontoon passes us there's just this guy white white long hair blowing in the wind (laughs) t-shirt on i mean i'm bundled up in like my insulated sims gear he's just got like a fluorescent like high vis yellow t-shirt on just (laughs) you know yeah he was hey boys (laughs) yeah because i have i have my hood up you know so i'm a boy too hey fellas i'm like that's incredible i i (laughs) do I picture it so well. I feel like I see so many different guys in that age group between maybe like 55 and 65 that just rep those straight freaking fluorescent shirts. And they're not bad. I want to say you get them at Menards or something like that, but they are popular. Yeah. They're wicked popular. They are on the, for the lake folk. I mean, looks good. Especially in Madison, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. You saw a tune. Yeah. Well, so Dude, I had heard of it. some people who busted out boats in southern Minnesota, or like uh I know some people were checking water temps under the ice up in Otter Tail, like where Clayton was looking for the Kings of Panfish Derby to check ice yeah. and stuff. And they were finding water temps in the low forties underneath the ice. Really? Yeah. So it's I like even melting. possible. It's, it's melting yeah. from underneath too. Well, there's no snow on top, so it's yeah. getting through. It's like, like the, the sun. sunlight is penetrating. The sunlight's the heating. Yeah, it's heating. So then the ice is like freezing over at night again. But then during the day, the water's still warming up. You know what I mean? We're yeah. going to have to science yeah, check that. But yeah. I, don't know. Weird, I don't man. know, Bart. <laughs> no, I, 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 there's I, a couple I, people who legitimately told me. I'm they not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying like, water. we might have to look into that. Well, I, I think I totally agree with you, Adam, because like I was just fishing on Sunday. And I feel like we walked out there and there was like five inches and it was like not that watery on top. And then when we were walking off, there was like definitely an inch or so less. And it definitely, it's melting. From it the didn't bottom. come off the top. It came yeah, off no. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. see It's that. melting yeah. from the bottom right now. You're yeah, talking me into this. Hey, Bart, where's it melting from though? You think? The top. <laughs> yeah. Who's on first? What's on second? <laughs> Well, all right, Fresh Meat, Madtown Mama, talk to us about the upcoming Crush City production we're about to see. The world has seen the teaser. I I just hopped Instagram today, and I did one scroll, and I saw your face on Rappler's page, and I was like, dang. 
Man, I just heard I... Jacob Wheeler say Maggie Jill, and I was like, huh? what? <laughs> it's incredible. Can I, crazy. Can I tell you guys something? Like, I'm not even going to try to play it cool right now. I said that to you already, Bart. Like, I the first time I saw that teaser, I cried. I was like, I didn't know he knew my name. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> oh, I, I'm God. serious. Okay. I'm serious. Okay. I was like, holy smokes. I don't know. It's just like, it's really cool, man. Like, I've said, I've made a few comments. Like, I don't feel like I belong on that team because it's just freaking stacked. But the cool thing is that, like, there is a place for everyone on that team. You know, I don't have to be some badass elite fisherman. Like, they have someone to kind of speak to everyone. And yeah, I'm a weekend warrior, whatever. Proud of it. Like, you're a, ba you're don't a badass. Know. Don't, don't underplay it. You're a no, I, I, I appreciate that. But you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just like, be even like having my name next to those other ones, like on a post, it's just blows my mind. Like I was just saying the other day, a few years ago, like Sobe, when we were in college, like if you would have asked me some of my dream companies to work with, like, yeah, I'm not flexing right now. I'm just like being grateful. Like I work with almost all of them. And like Rapolo yeah. was at the top of that list. And it's just, I'm like, how the hell did I get here? It's so cool. Like, that's so freaking cool. That's awesome. So I've been so hyped all day after that teaser came out. It's just so cool. when does when does your video drop? This Friday, Friday, Friday the eighth. Yeah, the eighth. And so have you got to see it. Yeah, have you seen like a rough cut of this or like anything, or you're just like I've seen some rough parts, some pieces of it. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You... Rephrase that. Rough like cut or like rough parts that are not being put in the video. I've seen you know it. I've I'm seen saying, a rough right, cut. Sophie? Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I've seen a rough cut. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if it's like the polished finished piece, but either way, like I've never been part of anything like this. Like I'm out fishing all the time, but my issue is when I'm out fishing, I just want to be fishing. Like I don't mess with GoPros and stuff. I should if I was smart, but I really don't. I don't have a camera oh, guy the following pack. me. You did it again. <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> she was doing. Yeah, yeah, there was, there don't, we go. Unreal. Don't you slide unreal. that in? Don't you slide that in? No, but continue with <laughs> your thought. Um, no, I just I've I've never had you know like a camera boat or a camera guy following me around. Like just having a piece like this about me and just telling just a fraction of my story. It just feels so cool to me. I I don't know. Hell yeah. That's really I'm cool. getting so cheesy. Leave no. it to the Wisconsin gal. Just be a straight cheese curd on here today. All right. All right. I have two questions for you. Question number one, what's your favorite crush city bait or one you're most excited about and why? And then question <clears> number two, give us something about this video that maybe we either won't see or we could look forward to or something that may, yeah, maybe something that won't make the cut. Give us something that won't make the cut. Like, cause more media produces, correct? Yep. So correct. something that maybe won't make the cut when you guys were filming this. Yeah. Cause I assumed you filmed last summer. Correct. Yeah. Um, that's hard. I mean, I hate to sound like a broken record. I know I say it every time, but I love that damn Bronco bug, man. Like it's good. It's I just, dope. I love it. And I, right when I was really getting into bass fishing, I hated flipping. Like I couldn't flip. I couldn't figure it out. Like just like, working it and feeling it and blah, blah. And once I like just made myself do it all day, like I didn't let myself pick up another rod. And I was like, you just need to figure this out. Yeah. I love it now. Like I just, I absolutely love it. So like throwing that on a Texas rig or something, it's just so fun to me. And I feel like it takes spending a day with a, a new bait. Like when I got sent those last spring or whatever, it takes a good day to like really believe in something, you know, like oh, believe in a bait. and that, that Bronco bug, like, Oftentimes when I'm fishing with Andrew, I'm in the back of the boat and he's a hell of a stick. And I was just picking up fish left and right behind him too, you know, and I, Mopping. I was kicking his ass like, and I mean, whether it be me and my skills or the Bronco bug, I don't know. But like yeah. ever since that day, I was like, this thing catches like, yeah, I love that thing. But I, I really started to like the freeloader a lot too. Like this time of year, spring, it's a little too early now, obviously, but like throwing a chatterbait around, um, but like I'm just realizing lately how versatile that thing is too. Like yeah. just throwing it on a jig head or whatever. Um, but yeah, Bronco Bug's probably first place in my heart. Um, and then something you might not make the cut in my episode. Um, so I mean it kind of makes the cut, but you don't get much of the story. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how much I want to give away, I guess, but essentially, you know, Sam, more media comes down 
to film us. This is sick. This is, like I said, I don't have anything like this about me in existence. I'm so jacked. He comes down to film and it couldn't have gone worse. Like <laughs> it couldn't have gone worse. Like we couldn't catch fish. We, uh, again, I don't want to give it away, but like this tournament that Andrew have won and I have won the past two years, it's probably the biggest tournament we fished together all year. We've won it the past two years. We're going for the three peat. Sam comes to film it. We're hyped. Shit just hits the fan. Like, yeah, it's oh. not good. And then uh, we end up hitting like our honey hole lake that night. We, I mean, we usually catch twenty five pounds there for like our best five. Nothing. <laughs> it's <laughs> it just it's so, curse of the camera always. It's seriously, it's dude. I felt so bad, but of course he made magic out of it, and I, I still had the opportunity to kind of tell people my story a little bit more which is cool but and and it's honestly it's realistic too and i like that because it's like not every day is a 25 pound day and not every day you go out and freaking win the derb you know what i mean right like it's real like it's just yeah that's the coolest thing with fishing in general it's like that's that's what was cool i mean you'll see what happens in the tournament but i i say that in there you know it's just the way it goes like the roads aren't always smooth there's bumps man and we just yeah figure it out i guess that's what I think is cool about this like crush city, like video series thing. Cause like, I, I mean, granted the other ones, I, I don't know much about, but like Sam, like when they were filming the one you're involved with, like was at a tournament that a whole bunch of our buddies were at and stuff, Yeah, which was like, kind of like what Maggie's talking about. Just like a total snooze fest, honestly. Same here. It was really bad. Like we, we, Sam Moore came and, and filmed a attorney Tuesday. And Ryan and Bart were at it. You know, we had the banana shirt on. We were hyped. <laughs> and the year before, Steph and I freaking crushed it on this lake, caught 20 pounds, won mm -hmm. the derb. And I love this lake. We're excited about it. I think I don't even – yeah, we might have barely got a limit. And they were rats. And it was so bad. And, like, <laughs> fish terrible. And we were all just, like – I felt bad, like exactly. Like yeah, you, I was just I like, felt so Dude. bad. <laughs> Dude, I, I could tell it wasn't going well when, like, I was sitting in the, I was sitting in the driver's seat of the car in the parking lot, eating sushi off the dashboard, and he came walking over with the camera, and I was like, "Oh fuck, if you're filming me right now, like things are not going well." <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Pink and I could have had our our great moment. We could have gotten a Turny Tuesday dub, but we. We botched it on our end too. That's freaking massive. We, we did not. It's but bad. it's fun being around like that production and everything. Mm -hmm. It's super cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, Maggie, what I was going to say is like with the, I think what's cool to see with this whole video for you, um, I think compared to the others, because like, you know, with Wheeler or whoever, like they're in front of the spotlight a lot, right? And like mm -hmm. even Sobe, like Sobe, you produce a lot of your own media and everything. Like you kind of you have seen that and everything before. I think what's really cool to see with Maggie is like she has built this, you know, she has built herself and this personality and an online presence and stuff to a way that is very admirable and done very well. But to see like this documentation done at like like the first documentation I think like that you've really been a part of is this insanely high level thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very genuine and cool to show how excited you are about it. Cause I think one of the things that, I mean, me as a videographer and storyteller, something that would kind of get to me is like when people don't show that it's because yeah. it's like, it is cool. Like it's totally mm -hmm. cool. And you make the person who makes a story feel better about it. Cause they're like, okay, I did him justice, you know? Yeah. So I think that's sweet. Yeah, for Plus, sure. I think I... People are going to relate to you like insanely oh, yeah. big time. Well, and that's kind of what I started telling myself. Like when I was feeling kind of unworthy to be on that team, I was like, I mean, maybe people relate to me more though. You know, I, there's a lot yeah. more people like me out there than like them, you know, that are fishing at that level. And I like to think I, I, don't know, I think it's cool. Like I get a lot of, you know, messages, like questions and this and that. So like being kind of an approachable, relatable person that people can reach out to. Um, I don't know. I think that's really special. And Bart, I, I never thought of it from that perspective, but that's, that's so true. And sometimes I feel like I'm supposed to act like I'm like cool and used to this, but I'm like, F that, you know, I, I'm excited and thankful for the opportunity and I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not. And I'm, I've been hyped about that. Just the trailer <laughs> all day. Like it's just really that's cool. Awesome. So when yeah, it comes I think out, that's so awesome. It. I love that. 
Yeah, thanks. What was that? Good question, Ryan. I said when it comes out on Friday, wh- where are you going to watch it? I don't know. I'll be at work. <laughs> well, like, are, you're not just going to no. watch it on your no. phone and be like, that was cool. Like, you're shutting shit down. You're going to be like, put it yeah. on the big screen. Yeah, no, I'll, like, like, I'll use my lunch break. <laughs> she's for sure going to make plans to do that, and it's going to pop up. She'd be like, shit. <laughs> like turn and start watching on the phone immediately. So she's gonna watch it once on the phone immediately. Then again, where the plans are made. That's my you, assumption. You and Andrew do. Need, you need to make popcorn. You need to shut it down and put it on the big screen. No doubt. Yeah. You should. I wish. You, you know, know who I wish I was with for this? My dad. He think oh, he's so proud of this sick. stuff. Like he, I'm excited for him to see this because he gets so excited from 15 second videos he sees. You know, like he's he's gonna think this is the coolest thing in the world. Where's your what dad live right now? Uh, he's way up, basically on the border of the UP. So okay. like opposite end of the state. But he'll watch. He'll watch it. He'll be responsible for like 300 of the views on it probably. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what counts. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So what, what else do you got going on now that open water <clears throat> stuff is coming? Are you doing any other like any other – tournaments or anything or what, what do you got lined up or are you going to the classic yeah so that was something i was gonna say earlier um i wish like this is kind of giving me a kick in the ass like even though i don't really have the time or the patience to do all the video stuff like there's so much more that like it wasn't captured in that video even like the wednesday night series that we run like I just got elected as the president of my bass club this year. It's like all the stuff we do for that, our overnight tournaments we go do. Like there's a Monday night uh, kayak league that I fish here. So like I'm not making any promises or anything, but I really want to try to get better about that. Like, I don't know. I can't relate to people and share my personality or anything over all the pictures I post, you know? So I really want to try to do more video stuff, but um, I will definitely be at the classic. I'm going to be doing some really cool stuff there uh, with Bassmaster and Rapala. I'll definitely have some other sponsors there that I'll swing by and do some stuff with. Um, kind of the same usual, just smaller local tournaments this year, um, which is a shit ton. But they're, Yeah, they're you guys always pack fun. it in heavy. Yeah, we have a lot. But um, should I should I break some never shared, never before shared news? On Here on Fresh Meat? Meat? Here on Fresh Me. Do it. I do believe. I don't know. Is this how I should do it? This is how you should do it. I don't know. I'll probably have to make my own post about this too, but boys, I'm fishing some of the opens this year. Oh, I'm super excited. Yeah. It's don't get too excited. It's just as a co, but I think that's going to be a really sweet, like learning opportunity for me, like get in the boat with different people and learn and get the feel for it and maybe work my way up to being a boater eventually. Uh, Hell yeah. But What's yeah. Division? Are you fishing the northern ones? So right now I'm fishing the northern ones. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so it's Bassmaster and Toyota have teamed up for like this really cool initiative uh, called Bassmaster Her. Uh, so they're uh, kind of sponsoring three of us gals to like get us competing at a higher level. And just ca- they're like putting on workshops that women can can get in on and learn and just kind of show other women out there that women are doing it so it's That's really really cool, cool. I, i'm yeah. super jacked yeah you're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna do awesome and you're gonna love it too like the, the co-angler stuff is fun and it's intense but it's also like its own different game like you just you're just you're you fish what's given you know mm-hmm. and i think you've already done that so much just fishing right you, you have tournament experience with andrew and all that like you're just you guys know yeah. you, it doesn't always go your way or you got to adjust mm-hmm. or do this and like you're gonna have fun. You're gonna have yeah. fun. Yeah. I'll see I, you I'm at pumped. all those ones. Hell yeah. <laughs> what if you get oh what if you're with if Bart? We, if you get oh, you're gonna get paired with oh, Bart's oh, gonna oh, go off on you. Could you imagine? Man, yeah, you were making so, a long run. She'd be I'm like, so I'm back. I'm so excited for this opportunity. And then I've been so excited to to get in the boat with like, you know, I have these chances oh, of these no. coolest people and I get Bart. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, that would I'm really fucking suck, like that to be honest. Happen. That is going to happen. be a really miserable experience. It'll oh, be. Look at you and be like, like so I'm you, out of man. stuff. What do you think we should go do? I'll, I'll put my kidney on it that says like when you go, because we're, we're the opens. One's on Leech. One's on. 
Yeah, First one's, one's lacrosse. St. Clair. Lacrosse, Second yeah. one's Leach. Third one's lacrosse. When you go to St. Clair, you're you're gonna get paired with somebody that you like know or somebody from around here, and you're gonna be like pumped to like, how does a St. Clair dude break this down? And you're gonna get probably like <laughs> a Wisconsin boy, and he's going, dude, I don't know either. <laughs> I'm here for the lacrosse derby. Yeah. Where would you go? <laughs> yeah. I you like know, it's river. funny. You'd think I'd be really excited about the lacrosse one, like living in Wisconsin. That's the one I'm the least excited about. Really? I, I'm not a big river gal. And I ne- that's my own fault. I need to get better. I just, I grew up fishing lakes. I primarily fish lakes. I think I people, that. people don't always realize how different fishing them are, but it's a lot different. I'm just not as good as it, good at it, but uh, we gonna have to get good at it. Gonna have to get good. Lacrosse is fun though. I I love that place. That one, that's one that you should like. It'd be really cool. Like if I were to ever do the co thing, those those Mississippi River tournaments would be so fun to get paired with someone who knows it really well. Just like the navigation aspect and seeing how they approach stuff and what they fish. Because like, even if you're with people who are like lakes people who are good on the river. They fish way different stuff than what those rats do. And yeah. like what those guys, like I, I was kind of lucky because I went to school in Winona. So I fished with Wyatt and some other guys a ton. So like I kind of got to see a lot of that. And that's kind of more of what I look for. I don't even fish the other stuff for the most part, but it's like, and then I went fishing with him in October this last year. And it still like hits you in the face again. And you're like, wow, this is so much different than what everybody else would fish. So. Yeah, that'll be yeah. a cool one. That'll be yeah. sweet to see. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I do a a decent amount of tournaments as a co angler, um, and like the bigger ones when I'll get paired with like guys from Minnesota or whatever. And it's funny. It's like we always end up becoming like Facebook friends. And one of the guys, like one of my favorite ones, just shared my Cross City teaser today and said, That's "Like, awesome. you know, she was paired as my co. She knows what she's doing." I was like. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm Thank right. you. Like, hell yeah <laughs> i love you <laughs> yeah i don't i think it's really cool like i, I kind of like psych myself out sometimes morning of i'm like oh what if they're like mean or scary or what if i yeah. have to pee and it's weird and what and then i'm in the boat for five minutes and i'm like oh, all right we're gonna have a good day yeah you know it's, what's gonna be wild though is this crush city thing's gonna come out you're gonna go to these opens and like everyone there is gonna know you no yeah no <laughs> Not a chance. it's no. gonna be fucking nuts no. <laughs> yeah. No. Count it right now. All right. We'll see. Are you gonna are you gonna break out anything for the opens? Like any any special juju, like a, a banana shirt of your own per se? Like you just if it was legal, you just bring a six pack of your bush lights with mm. corn and then, cans. And then corn it? cans. I think you should have something signature you bring to every open. Yeah, I like that. I'll have to think on that. I mean Do you remember your probably... OG t shirts? yeah with your face on them why <laughs> not are those still available uh, no god no damn it um <laughs> i did i actually just ordered my very first like legit jersey so that's cool oh, i had to get yeah. you know the my supporters on there but um this is way tmi so i'm so sorry it's if any of you said it it would be fine but because i'm a chick but andrew's in my <laughs> thing uh for for tournaments he always wears like american flag boxers every yeah. tournament like he has multiple different pairs of American flag boxers because they're lucky. So I too found American flag underwear. That's, That's juju. That's that yeah. good juju. Yeah. Yeah, but I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, show that obviously. You know, so I, I'll have to find something else. You can. You're like, There's a lot of this. people who do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not my. That's not the approach. You're I'm not trying take, to be that kind of popular, dude. No, but either way, the juju is not for anybody else but yourself. Fishing chick on Instagram. (laughs) What? (laughs) That's the juju. Yeah, you're gonna have to come up with something though. I feel like you have to. Yeah, I'll think on that for sure. I don't know what it's gonna be. We'll circle back. We'll circle back. Yeah, it's hard as a coat. You know, you got like one compartment. I got. It's gotta be small. (laughs) Well, it doesn't need to be like something like. I'll bring like like one of those like rabbit. Love's lucky rabbit. Yeah, foot like a rabbit foot. Yeah. That'd be sick. <laughs> what you really need to do is just bring a small sticker and you just put it inside the co-angler compartment before you leave. 
Maggie Joe was say here. anything. Or you just gorilla mark <laughs> like right at blast off, you just slap it to the outside of their boat. <laughs> and just <laughs> saw oh, the man. passenger right. side right there. Maybe we'll so when they're like taking pictures of, of you, there's just an arrow that points up and says, I'm Maggie Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get you a whole box of past the barb stickers. You can just slap it on oh, boats yeah. as you walk by. Yeah, actually, yeah. How do we get on that jersey you said you made? You're gonna have to we increase the number. Past oh, that's the no barb problem. Right yeah, there. you're gonna have that's to no problem. Yeah. Add more numbers to that check that's in the mail already. Yeah. Did like you we, hear the Aaron Weeb in interview? Yeah. We have so much of a budget. Yeah, we paid a lot to get him on, and we paid an, a, an, a smaller amount just because you're only going to be on for like 20 minutes. It's just a segment. Yeah, but yeah. for the Jersey part, we, yeah, we'd fork it out. We'd I mean, it'd be an uncomfortable amount for sure. But the only I, thing we ask for is there has to be no social media posts or anything tagging us. Yeah. Okay. We want just, total uninvolvement. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Literally yeah. nothing. Nice. All right. <laughs> the price will be right. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've heard I, I've heard my podcast was pretty popular, so I'm going to have to up my rates a little bit here. That's it was fine. the fee picks. Like it was <laughs> the fee picks. It was the title. It was the clickbait title. <laughs> you know, that didn't come to bite me in the ass as much as I thought. I thought I'd be hearing about that, but. We're bringing it back maybe, for round we'll two. Maybe I, should look at, maybe I should look at the YouTube comments. I didn't make it that far, I guess. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to sharing it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pink, what's the other segment you got for this? All right, so what we're, we're going to – we started this segment on the last pod, and because you're here, we wanted to we wanted to bring it around to you. And uh, th- this segment's called What You Been Drinking. And we just want to know what is the absolute best thing that you've been drinking lately what do you can't be to? a sponsor plug and it, it and it could be something weird new old something typical <laughs> what oh. you've been drinking lately oh dude i got it i got yeah. it wisconsin supper club I, I don't even know what to call it but but you get them there i'm on a real kick of grasshoppers after dinner drinkies oh, you know ice cream drinks yes, yes. little little grasshoppers are yeah. delicious they really are I, I know dessert. that was the weirdest answer I could have given. It's not. But... No, it is not. Really good. No, Dude. no, grasshoppers are delicious. Oh, yeah. That's my thing. Do you make them yourself or do you only get we them have. at a restaurant? We have. Yeah. <laughs> you know? we, went, we Googled like the ingredients and got shit to make them We at could home. do this at home. We but could do it. But they're not the same. They're not the they're same. They're not the same. They're not the same. <laughs> so are you, do you stir these or does Andrew Christmas. stir them up? Um, I'm generally the bartender, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, are, those are, are good. Are Alyssa's grandparents' ones really good? I didn't say her grandparents okay. make them. I said that their family makes okay, them for okay. Christmas. But yes, I mean, they're good. It's alcoholic. I don't know. It's like alcoholic mint ice cream is basically the way I could explain it. Yeah. Out delicious. of a straw. Yeah. So it's good. I agree. Damn. Um, How about Adam? How about you? Uh, well, we kind of prefaced this earlier, but great Pedialyte. So I'm a little sick okay? right now. He's yeah, not. I'm a little sick. I'm not. <laughs> He's I've not. been a lot better, to be honest. <laughs> He's ill. He's the illest. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Praying for you. With, with a matching sweatshirt as well. Yep. I'm purple all grayed drink, out. Wow. <laughs> you got a lot going out. for you there, buddy. Lil Wayne. I'll just start leaning oh. <laughs> to the left or something. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. How about you, Ryan? Dude, I got on a new one this weekend. And, uh, let me tell you, <laughs> crown apple cranberries. Holy oh, shit. Oh, no. I got <laughs> fucking deleted on Saturday. <laughs> Dude. Dang. Maggie that was knows. Millbrand's I fault. I did that once. It? Yes. Yeah. Millbrand got me on those this weekend at the bar. We were the only people in the bar. And he's like, Well, actually, have- <laughs> preface this pink. We were the last of all the people in the bar. You shut it down. So when all the food and everything was getting served, we had to wait till the way end. Yeah. So we were definitely there the longest. And by yes. the time we left, everybody was gone. But yes. Yes, it started off full and then it ended with just us. But either way, these uh yeah. So crown apple cranberries, and it was like had a little bit of sprite in there, dude. And Delicious. I, it it was too del- that was the problem, dude. Like I 
he he talked me into this, and I was like, this probably isn't going to be that good, but it was that good, and uh, didn't end well. Tell you that for free. But I feel fun. strongly that I need to interject here really quick, if you don't Do mind. It. Do it. Apologize for being rude. Why you sent me a Snapchat though, and whatever was in your cup looked like sludge, like it was like black, like purpley black. That was because we started with rum and cokes. Oh no, dude! I know what rum and coke looks like. Like this was like purple, like it looked like you mixed like every color possible together, and it made like this brownish, blackish, like purple. Oh, that it was looked- the, that was the crown apple cranberry. Oh, they don't look I- good. I don't know if y'all were making them right. <laughs> I wasn't making them. I was just drinking them. It looked toxic. <laughs> I was worried about you. Verified. Okay. <laughs> was, your, was, your, was your tummy okay in the morning? I think I woke up still pretty drunk, to be honest. So you're okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I woke up. Griff was still sitting at the kitchen table. Sun was out. It was like 9 a.m. He was asleep (laughs) there? I don't know. (laughs) I assume so, dude. All I remember was him like yelling in his night terror shit at the table. I was like pretty fucked up. And then I was just. (laughs) That that was at like. like, That was only at like 11 or midnight. (laughs) <laughs> and was, dude, no, 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 no. The screaming was at midnight. <laughs> it, it, was 100%, it was 100%. It was 100% at midnight because Logan and I were sitting right there talking about like, oh, oh, is there anything else we need to shoot tomorrow or whatever? And like, we're just talking to each other. Pink is asleep on the couch and Griff is in his like fifth round of the head bobs where he's trying to not fall asleep, but he's 100% falling asleep. And all of a sudden he just goes, just fucking give me that. And like reaches out and I'm like, like screaming though, like screaming anger, anger looks at me. And I'm like the, the <laughs> shot list, <laughs> like, and like handed my phone over. And he's like, Whoa, <laughs> like, Whoa. he like gets up and goes over. I'm like, what what was that? And he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> he just like <laughs> sat down. On he's a like, that was chair. weird. That was weird. That was really weird. <laughs> That's intense. And like then he did it again like later, and I don't remember what it was about. But I don't yeah. know. It was, it was anyway. Crazy. Everyone had a great time. Crown apple yeah. cranberries all around, you know. Sounds what good. I'm gonna do? try. Soby, what have you been drinking? <laughs> um, I've been I've been kind of drinking. It's weird. I haven't like been in Wisconsin, but I've been drinking Wisconsinly, um, casually. I I had a buddy that went to Wisconsin, so he brought me back some spotted cow, which is always good. It's a special right. treat. And then while we were burbot fishing, good buddy Cole, he picked up, I want to say, a 30-pack of hams for mm-hmm. dirt cheap. And we went, we ripped hams. We ripped hams heavy. And then. Like it's normally expensive or what? No, no, it's not. But it, like I forgot how <laughs> cheap like, the 30 Oh, you got a hell of a deal was. on this hams. Dude. It was well, expired. So the deal was insane. It. it was really good. I swear it was like 11 bucks for a 30 rack. But um, and then besides uh, cold beers. Um, I had a couple monster rehabs, the lemonade kind. Those, those were not too bad. I don't like pound energy drinks by any means, but I had some of those and they were pretty good. They would be refreshing in the summer. Monster rehab, huh? Mm-hmm. Lemon, lemonade flavor. Those are the ones that are like not carbonated. They're like the tea ones. Yeah. They're really good. Not yeah. gonna lie. That sounds pretty bad. No, they're <laughs> good. Like in the summer, they're pretty good. Adam's like, they're good. Wait, well, back like me up, Adam. Good. Yeah, <laughs> they're good. No, if I mean, you need, like, okay, okay. Last, last, last if you're week, on a Cody you some cosmic dragon diet, brownie one by this new brand. What? what? What'd you say last week? You're drinking me? Yeah, for energy drinks. Oh, dude, that the cosmic stardust. You, Alani. I gave you, I gave you no harsh shit for the cosmic <laughs> dude, stardust. So but many... you hit me on a monster. Rehab. No, 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 no. Me? I got messages on Instagram of people that went and bought it and said how good it was. So you can suck it on that. <laughs> All right, okay. you guys, I'm a head out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Anyways, Maggie, this interview's uh, been great. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm a little scared ever since like the the night <laughs> screaming. Uh, <laughs> night terror. It took a turn it's been for the worst since once then. we hit pink collar. Unreal. <laughs> God damn it. But no, that's that's what we've been drinking. 
That's Fresh Meat with Maggie Carcello. Maggie, thank you for being on here. Any last thing you want to say to the folks before you, you peace out? Yeah, it's really insightful just because I just noticed it is March 4th in Wisconsin, and I'm already yeah. getting my nose triangle back. You see that shit? God damn. Where's the tan line on the on flip-flop line at? Yeah, I didn't. I had I had the chuckas on, not the flip-flops yet, but we'll get the there. Chuckas. You can't even talk right now. We'll get there. I'm saying that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's, I did see hard. someone wearing it's flip-flops hard. in northern Minnesota this weekend. She was definitely on meth, but she was wearing flip-flops. <laughs> you had those blown-out Beats headphones on, dude? Yeah. Nice. Rocking flip-flops. flip-flops. She yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Damn. So she beat you, Maggie. What do you got to say? Sweating. I'm going to let her have that one. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you, Maggie. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. How do I? (laughs) (laughs) For any of you folks that kind of want to follow along uh, Maggie's adventures, I think, what's her handle? Maggie Carcello Outdoors? Maggie Joe Outdoors. Maggie Maggie Joe Outdoors, Outdoors. yeah. Follow her on Instagram and and follow her. She's she's soon to be YouTube from what I hear. That's what she's I an heard. absolute badass. She promised it, actually. She, she did. She's, she's a fun one to follow for sure, no doubt. She's always doing some crazy stuff and everything in the outdoors. It is Maggie Joe, J O underscore outdoors. All the other ones are fake accounts. So just make sure you get that correct because she, <laughs> she actually has enough followers because okay. she does have a lot of fake accounts as well. That's when you know. That's when yeah. you know. That's when you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't belong on the Crush City team. <laughs> Meanwhile, you try to Google any of the other guys, and they pop up immediately. You try to get Maggie. There's 12 other fucking profiles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Welcher no. does an interview, and he's like, I don't know, man. I ain't even got no <laughs> fake accounts. People trying to spam me or nothing, man. I don't feel like I should be on this team. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, good. Well, all right. Can I do a, a bathroom break really quick? I've got. Yeah. All right. So, so wow. you run and do your bathroom break. Pink and I will talk about a couple things and we're going to debut a new segment that we're pretty excited about. Yeah. We're, we're blowing the doors off on the new stuff this week. I'll tell you that. We are. We are. Um, <clears throat> dude, sickness is not fun. I'm not enjoying this at all right now. I'm enjoying the podcast. I'm not enjoying the sick. The Ill- I am enjoying illness. you not enjoying it, though. That well, at least you got that going for you. I'll probably get it though, because honestly, I'll probably get it from. We you. didn't ride together much. Logan's probably screwed though. That could be. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, dude, dude we didn't even get to talk about that. We should tell the listeners about this. So we enjoy this too. Then we'll go into our new segment. Um, lost drone. We have another lost drone story. We do, and, and we I have actually, a really good lost drone story. To yes, actually, to let's get. actually. So yeah, we discussed this previously. We I think we discussed like three or four drone catastrophes that we had previously. Yeah. This weekend we had a good one, and probably I would say at this point, probably the most expensive drone to date. By far. Involved yeah. in a drone catastrophe, right? Oh, 100 percent Yeah, definitely yeah. very expensive. Like you lose this one, like slight anxiety attack, especially Let's, as a new like freelance videographer. 100%. Yeah, and like, what, this what is, one was it? It was the DJI Mavic 3. So, Sobe, we're going to talk about this, and we're going to dive into our new segment. Um, but we uh, we had another drone. We got another lost drone story. Uh, it happened this weekend. <laughs> and um, this is a good one. You got another drone with night terrors? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> um, Literally. So, we get, we're, we're uh, out filming, you know, doing our thing. And uh, we're rolling to this lake and uh, it's a long gravel road. There's like a river by it and stuff. And Logan's riding with me and we're driving for a bit. And we got a couple of other trucks behind us and we're getting close to like where this river hits the road. And I'm like, dude, you want to pop out, throw the drone up? And he'd already pulled it all out and everything. So it was already go. He's like, yep, give me a second. Pull over. Couple of the other guys who were behind us pull up by me. I'm like, yeah, you guys go ahead. I just want like, you know, two or three people in the car line and then we'll fly the drone. So Logan puts her in the middle of the gravel, which you will come to find out. Launch your drones from smart places. Um, so that's Where like a actually home point. <laughs> yeah. Home Pro point. Tip. Very important. Pro tip. Um, so it puts it in the middle of the gravel road, flies it. 
gets back in the truck. I'm like, you good? Yep, I'm good. And we start driving. Like, he's just kind of doing his thing in the passenger seat, and we're chatting. I'm like, yeah, does it look cool? He's like, yeah, it looks really cool, you know, and whatever. We're talking. It's in there for about a minute. And I'm like, all right, am I going the right speed, or am I getting too fast? What's going on? He's like, no, you're good. You're good. We're going. And all of a sudden, just. What? It's gone. Black screen. Total disconnect. I look at him. I'm like, what? And he's like, it's fucking gone. And he shows me it, and it's just black. I'm like, well, what? Did I drive too far away? And I like pull over. I'm like, go, just go hop on the trailer quick. Get higher. Like, see if he can reconnect. And he like runs back and like he's doing stuff. I'm like, dude, just unplug it, plug it back in. Like, it should not, it should just reconnect. It's not that far. Like, we're, <sighs> we were not that far away. It's not like we're a quarter mile away or anything like that. It's like, I don't know, 500, 600 feet. Not very far and uh still black so waldo waldo pulls up next to me and i look at them and i'm like logan's drone's gone and like this is literally a gravel road we're like seven miles down i'm like i can't turn around so and it's in like a big uh like state forest area so there's like no buildings it is just like woods on both sides of this thing yep so i don't i'm like dude i can't turn around so waldo let him hop in your truck you guys got to go backwards so you know waldo's like oh i want to get to the like blah 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 i'm like well we need this drone because it's a <laughs> extremely expensive drone that yeah, logan i'm ready to drill in and logan's like i have three thousand dollars that's black and in the air yeah exactly yeah. i have three thousand dollars that is somewhere 500 feet in the air gone like i have no idea where it is so he gets in the truck with uh them and you hop on the tailgate i think pink yep and you guys you guys so, go further back Right. So, so what happened? You well, there was because then you come back again. But I'm saying in this yeah. in this time, so they vanish. Uh, only thing I do is hop in my truck. I'm chilling for a little bit. One guy drives up to me. Uh, he's got like a triple axle, like snowmobile, four wheeler trailer, or whatever. Comes by, comes up because my hazards are on. He's like, "What's going on?" I was like, "Oh, nothing. Like we're just filming some stuff, and we got a drone up in there. That you're gonna, you're gonna go see another truck that's like they're probably still in reverse because Waldo had just gone straight reverse. He didn't turn around or anything. Yeah. And I was like, you'll probably see him going the other way. Uh, but they're they're just trying to locate a drone quick, so it's no big deal. And he's like, all right, sounds cool. See you, man. That's it. That's the only conversation I have. Anyways, Pink, go ahead. Yeah. So okay. So then, so then they come back to where Bart's parked. Right. And at the, actually I had just walked up in the woods. Like I wasn't even with them. I was just like, whatever, dicking around waiting for them to come back. And then uh, they come back and then they're kind of like, Oh, I don't know what to do or whatever. And so I go down there, I jump on the tailgate with Logan. We tell Waldo, like, let's go back. Cause I was like, you should be able to pull up like in the app. There's a map that shows like the last location that it pinged or whatever. Yeah. So I was like, let's try that. He was able to do it. And this is, this is where Waldo's like, well, it kind of sounds like a you. He's like, it kind of sounds like a you problem. Like, if you would like to walk onto the water, the machines are behind me. So, yeah, yeah he was just like, you over choose. It. He's like, not our yeah. thing, not our yeah. problem. Yeah, this and is I, totally I, your thing. Like, he's yeah, hundred percent exactly. our thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah hundred yeah. percent <laughs> our thing. He just wanted to get fishing because we were going to a really good lake, and he was excited. It's a but very also, typical if Waldo's yes. excited to get to a lake. But also so, we uh, had like a ton of other people with that were going to go to the, like either way, we're just going to get there. We had a ton of other people who are already at the lake looking for fish. Yeah. That like had they're going to find by fish. And we're we'll like, we're looking for the drone. It's fine. Also, yeah. I looked at that and like Logan had come back and been like, dude, we can't find it. I'm screwed. And I was right. like, here's the deal, man. It's been in there for 21 minutes and those batteries last 44 minutes. I'm like either it's going to just fall from the sky It'll in return. 23 minutes or it's going to come back to its home Returned point home. something's going to happen but right. we got to wait <laughs> 22 so we, minutes for it to so happen we jump on the truck we jump on the truck and we drive back because now we have a point on the map to at least try and it's just like up in the woods you know I'm like fuck, <laughs> can you see it or hear it at this point no nothing and so we drive down the road till we're like even with the dot and then me and logan just like start hiking up into the woods and it's like all hilly and shit going up there. And it's like super dense, thick shit. Yeah. And Waldo and Griff are just like sitting in the truck, right? Like they didn't even like get out or anything. They're yeah. just like chilling there. 
So I, we hike up in there and we're like bushwhacking. And I'm, we're, I'm like, are we getting close to the dot? We're like, oh, a little further, a little further. We get to like this kind of like clearing thing. And he's like, all right, it says it's like, it says the spot's like right here. Okay. So we start like looking around and it was like, you know, you look for like two minutes and you're like, yeah, we're, it's not right here, obviously. Yeah. But the whole time, like, cause I was like, well, did you like keep using the sticks after? Cause like if it would have connected, like how much further could it have gone? You know, maybe a couple yeah. hundred feet or whatever. So we're digging with that for a while. He's just like mashing the return to home button and like, you know, and like just yeah. trying to see, never reconnected to the drone, nothing. Like not one time, never, like the screen was just black. Black screen I've never, for 30 minutes. Gone. I've never seen just a black screen either. Did he unplug it? Unplugged yeah. it, unplugged shut the controller phone, down, turned shut, the phone shut off. the controller off, everything, everything. Everything, tried everything. And I'm like, I've never seen this. Like I've had it disconnect a bunch of times, but like it, I've always been able to like recover it or at least get it to return to home, like hit the button and like it starts yeah. beeping or whatever. Couldn't even do that. So we're messing with that for a long time. And then Waldo's honking his horn. He's just yelling. He's like, it's gone. Let's just go. <laughs> You're like, dude, like if, if I just, if there was just like $3,000 floating I in don't. the air and there was a slim possibility that you could get it back, you would be yeah. like, let's stay. <laughs> so we're kind of like, we're kind of at the point where we're like, this is probably a lost cause, like just hiking around aimlessly now. But now Logan was like semi like, dude, we should just look for sheds. I was like, is no one looking for this fucking drone other than me? <laughs> He's like, dude, do you think there's any moose paddles around here? And so anyway, so we we go back to the road. And I'm just like, dude, let's just at least drive. I was like, do you remember where the home point even was like on the road? And he's like, yeah, yeah I think it was just like around this bend or whatever. It's like, we should at least try just like driving there. Yeah. Because like what last ditch effort, right? Yeah. Does it, did it like return to the spot? So we jump in and we tell Waldo like, dude, just bet. And he's like driving in reverse going like 50 miles an hour now. Of course. Yeah. So we're like sitting on the tailgate, like ripping down this road. And uh, we get around the corner and like, cause he, I was like, well, did you take it off? Like right in the middle of the road? He's like, yeah. So we get around the corner and there's no, like, you can see it's like the straightaway and there's obviously like not a drone in the middle of the road. So we're just like going down, but like Waldo didn't know where the spot was. So he just like keeps driving. Right. So we're just like, keep going down this road, down this road. And we're like, Oh, like it should be right here. Like that's crazy. Right. Yeah. And we're just like driving down. And it was funny because we're like going and then we must have both like at the same time, like we we're like looking. So there's one tree like on the side of the road that has like, you know, like when you're driving down those roads, there's always just like random fucking flagging shit like on Absolutely. trees. So there's one of those like hanging there and we're just like driving past it and we get like even with it. And it's like right next to the road. And we both must have at the same time been like, holy shit, because like we're driving by it and it looked like like there was like lights and shit like flashing on there, but like neither one of us were like, Oh, that's probably like what we're looking for. We just like drove right past it. Like, Oh, whatever. And then we're like, Oh wait, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so yeah, it is hanging in a tree next to the road, but it's like tied to the tree with like flagging tape. <laughs> like somebody had found it and then like put it on this tree. Really? Yeah, so I just texted you guys a video from when we recovered. That's it. so that's so kind. Whoever did that. So Silby, well, you know how I mentioned earlier, I talked to one person on that road when I was sitting there, and I said, "Yeah, we're trying to locate a drone or whatever." One hundred percent, the only person who could have done that is whoever this man was. Yeah, was driving down that road with his triple axle trailer. And there was a drone sitting in the dead fucking middle of the gravel road, just blinking. And he was yeah, like, it definitely what are landed. they looking for? Yeah, it <laughs> like, definitely landed at the home point. It's, it's in yeah. the middle of the gravel road. Yeah. And he That's, just taped it to the tree. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you guys got it back. That story just makes my skin yes, crawl. We got honestly. it back it's completely unscathed. Feeling. Perfectly fine. But yeah, I took a video when we actually found it. And we were all like geeking out. But then it's unreal. <laughs> but then I also texted you another video. Uh, so this was after the drone recovery. So when I mentioned that we seen that other wolf. So this is the video that we recorded during that. That also right at the end of this video, he loses connection with the drone when it's like 10 feet off the ice going like full sticks out in the middle that of the wolf lake. wolf is hauling ass. Dude, yeah. that video is insane. It is. It can never be shown. But yes. 
But yeah, so it's a sick clip. It really is. Uh, but same deal. He lost total connection out in the middle of the lake doing that. So I was, I don't know if maybe needs a software update or something, but two oh, drone catastrophes you. avoided on that trip. But yeah, that was unreal. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. All right. So we got a new segment here. If our, uh, our other guy was here, I know there he is. Okay. There yep, he is, he is here. here. All here. right. So I'm going to bring him in in a sec. Good friend of mine, good friend of uh, a couple of ours. But uh, so this is a new segment. We're going to call it it's single shot, right, boys? Yeah. Yep. All right. So this is going to be a quick one. I don't know. It could be 30 seconds, could be five minutes. I have no idea. But the whole basis of this segment is single shot. So all it is is we ask this guest one question and then we move on with we our lives. We each ask so one question. We each ask one question. Yes. And then we move on with our lives. So. That's a beautiful thing about single shot. So we're just here for a quick deal. It's not an interview. Um, yeah, just don't get long winded. So the first guest to single shot is our friend Chad Smith. And I have to ladies be ladies and very gentlemen, careful. round of applause for Chad Smith. Yeah, Chad, what Chad are? Smith. Yeah. Checking in with the lettuce. Hey, yeah. real quick before we even get started on this, I got two things. One, Pinkala, your dudes, dude, are a freaking primo, dude. Like like thanks I, bro Shelby, you know what i mean and then number two blackberry crown and lemonade coming from a bartender oh Jeez. right Pro that tip. down right Pro that tip. down yeah that All seems right, very scary this. okay <laughs> single shot do you want to lead it off so be pink or should i lead it off i, I can lead it off i can lead it off just off, okay, off. Do it. um quick question uh any suggestions you would give to folks or what suggestion would you give to folks that would like to get into longboarding? Uh, don't hit a rock, because I just broke my wrist in December longboarding, which is stupid. But, um, That's stupid. I just got my cast off like a month ago, maybe. No, not even, like three weeks ago. And yeah, no, I was longboarding around, had my AirPods in. It was a nice day, just like we had yesterday. And um cruised around and i hit a rock and fell around i used to skateboard all the time ouch but fell bad on it broke a little bone in my hand called my scaphoid bone and luckily i didn't need surgery it healed up pretty well and pretty quick comparatively so um yeah i don't know pay attention <laughs> that's good up to you ryan all right ryan? So th yeah this this is this is a critical question i would like to know uh, given the option, uh, what what is your all time favorite Girl Scout cookie? Oh, definitely tag alongs. Thin mints are my second runner up for sure, though. But that, that wasn't part of the question. Of the deal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was not part of the question. It was number the first tag alongs. Tag -alongs. Tag -alongs. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I will go off of that. Yeah. We. You. Luckily, there's only three of us here today, so single shots running fast. Um, I don't want to just be a part of this now, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, it's single shot, so you're kind of yep, fucked. Yep, um, <laughs> I would out. like to know, I would like to know as a camping connoisseur, what are your top three grocery items that you must have at a campsite? Rice, chicken breast, ramen noodles. Ooh. Or actually, I, I take back the chicken breast because it's hard to keep rice, you can, but on occasion i like to have like rice and chicken if i'm feeling healthy otherwise there's like these canned like chunky chili deals that you can just get a bunch of and the spicy chili ones are the deal for a quick oh. heat up unreal no. i will keep notes yeah. of that all right yeah. well that was single shot chad do you have any questions for us or do you have uh, a question for us i should say yeah so be favorite genre of music oh um gangster rap no doubt Probably West Coast gangster rap. All right. Pinkala, favorite seasoning? Uh, well, definitely Everglades. All right. Bart, yeah. I got to think about you for a sec. Well, that's too bad. We don't have time. All for right. That. that was single <laughs> shot. That was single <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> Moving oh. on. All right. On to our next segment. Thank you All for right. the Chad Smith. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the best part is he's behind the screen. To see the Sorry, bro. You had your chance. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Oh, Chad, ben, that was beautiful. Ben you ben did real, so dude. good. 
Okay. Okay. I'm trying not to lose it on camera. I think he was <laughs> backstage cry. longer than he was on, dude. <laughs> Dead serious. Good sport. He's a good guy and a good yeah, sport. Good, good, good guy. Sport. So good that was guy. a good yeah. shot. We're gonna have a lot of fun with that one in the future. Yeah. Have oh. people on we really like, maybe some people we don't like, you know. I'm sure he'll agree to it again, dude. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I think that went well. Maybe we'll have him on for a full interview at some point. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> See if the people like him enough. <laughs> All right, boys. I gotta be honest with you. Sam, I sent this to you. I think we should let the people know. We got an update. We got an update from Captain Bill. Captain Bill. He's running in the wilds of Argentina. <sighs> mm-hmm. I requested another update, and we received one. Just like Ryan said, um, Captain Bill is, he's kind of like our long-lost first cousin, but removed. We love him like a first cousin, but he's been removed from our family just for you know, geographically, like you said, he's an Argentina guiding and once a week or once every two weeks, he sends Ryan or one of the boys, uh, kind of an update and I'm about to read it right here. So here we go. <clears throat> I need to harness the chi of, of wild bill. That Argentine energy is what we yeah. need you to bring tonight. All right. Hola amigos. Almost three weeks into my Argentine expedition, all is well. Toto Bean, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. I'm in the San Martin area of the Patagonia doing red stag hunts with my biz partner, mi amigo, ja- <laughs> Jaqueen. <laughs> what is it again? We don't know him. <laughs> with mi amigo. Joaquin. Joaquin. <laughs> so your Spanish is dust. About midway through the first week with clients. Plenty of stag pouring in. Love is in the air. Probably killing in the next day or two. Shid is easy. Client missed one last night at under 100 yards. Complete vapor lock panic mode. These boys are dust. Capital D-U-S-T period. New paragraph. The roar is awesome. Fantastic ranch and accommodations. Every big game hunter should do this. Perhaps our numerous and very wealthy sponsors can finance a pass the barb trip here. Worth every peso that South America <laughs> worth every peso that South America for money. <laughs> Good fishing to be had here too. I got my hands on a real beauty of a wooden drift boat. Leaks like a sieve, but we are catching. Hunt in the morning, take them fishing before lunch, siesta after lunch, then hunt the evening. Life is good, amigos. I do it for the tibs. <laughs> One thing I was wondering about is, do we think it's possible we can come up with any more nicknames for Burbit? I swear, I see a new one each day. If you want to fish with me in Montana this summer, drop me a line. Prime dates, fading fast. I know he's bouncing all over, but this is this is his words. Not hitting the bottle very much as I'm working every day now. Such is life. So apologies for the bland update. Captain Bill. Boom. There it that is. Was good. That was good. And Thank, thanks, Captain Bill. So about two minutes ago, I did get another update. Oh. I'll text you boys the photo now. Like breaking news. This is breaking news. So he had messaged me the other day prior to sending that that uh he's guiding florida Fr- uh i think fred florida fred maybe so he's got on a red stag hunt right now the guy that missed one super close range the other day yeah and uh i i uh would like to say that florida fred is tagged out in argentina florida. sending it to you boys now boom joaquin Captain Bill's first successful red stag guided trip in Argentina. We'll post the pic at some point. But I just I sent you boys it. the kill shot. I gotta see it. I'm gonna wait. Yeah, I'm the, waiting. The ping coming through. Oh, it's coming it. through. Oh, I just got it. That is. Sick. Oh man, unreal. That's incredible. He looks stoked, boys. 
Yeah, that is so cool. I am so jealous of what he is doing right now. I know, right? How could you not be? Yeah, like I don't even hunt, and I'm just like the whole life and livelihood and everything down there. It just looks so sick. The so the update says, he said, Florida Fred gets redemption. I said, fucking meat, how far? He said 75-ish yards. He shot it in the neck when he was aiming for the vitals. By God, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Florida Fred, last stand redemption. <laughs> Arrows incredible <laughs> incredible that's a beautiful we'll beautiful take it animal. wow the red stag so i didn't cool. think i didn't think they were that big dude yeah wow. that's sick as hell he's on and, him he's on and, him and it's a cool glimpse of kind of the country he's hunting and stuff like and he's been posting like crazy on this argentina outdoor adventures page so you can see like, like they got a bunch of in the field footage of these critters doing their thing too which is pretty sick because he's running their social media that's cool. So follow along, you know? Yeah. It's been the cool to see. Is on. <laughs> no, that was a good update. I'm excited. Every time we'll be doing this now, I'll be so excited for the diary of Wild Bill. Yes. I know. Because it's like even, even I don't know, the listeners, but even us boys, like we're not in great contact with him because he's guiding every day and he's, you know, halfway across the world. So it's like this is our glimpse, you know, at, at what he's got to say and what's new with him too. So. Thanks, Captain yes. Bill. All right, so we're gonna get into a little bit. I, I think we'll we'll start off. I mean, we just had we just had the kickoff to the Bassmaster Elite Series season, two back to back events. We got fantasy kicking off. We got some results to share from that. But first off, do we just want do we just want to talk about how? I mean, we've got two weeks of fantasy under our belt now. I don't, I don't know exactly how that shaped up. I don't know if you have that in front of you. Yeah, uh, I, would, I can do I can do the uh I can do the math on the last one real quick if you guys want to chat about the event a little quick. They yeah, were just so on Lake They were just, just on a, Lake Fork. Yeah, so just to break down real quick. So we're doing a fantasy And what league. it is. Yes. Yeah. So we're doing fantasy fishing, Bassmaster Elite series. Um anyone can join. It's free to do. Uh we have a pass the barb group on there. So if you join Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, you can join our pass the barb group if you want to compete against us. Uh, within the podcast, we are competing against ourselves basically to base to not lose. <laughs> yeah. So there's an overall ranking in the group, but for what we're doing, we're basically getting a score like one through four, depending on how we place in each tournament. And then it's like golf scoring, whoever has the lowest score at the end wins. Uh, there'll be a punishment for whoever the grand loser is of the whole thing. We got two events under our belt now. Um, and I think the leaderboard is interesting if i if i'm remember and and is it still possible to get in because like fantasy fishing is so easy you literally just go on like if you google fantasy fishing you can make an account and you go in and you can set a lineup yes. in like 30 seconds so you easy can, effortless and it's just it's fun you yeah like, and if like if you missed a couple events it's kind of a bummer because you basically get like a zero for the ones you weren't in but you can still compete have fun try to pick good good rosters or whatever and there's a ton of other groups who you can join that are like per event not for the whole season so like you might be able to win. there's like tons of stuff you can win not through past the bar but we'll have a we'll have a prize for our overall winner of our group and then a punishment for the loser of us four basically <laughs> yeah but so anyway there's been two two tournaments one was uh just this past weekend um that was on lake fork and the one prior to that, what, what, what where did they lead off at? Toledo Bend. Toledo, Toledo Bend. Bend. Toledo Bend. Yeah, two two giant premier fisheries. Yeah, and to be, I only watched a little bit of live coverage of one of the events. I didn't see the I didn't see anything from this from Lake Fork, but a uh, lot of a lot of big bass being caught at both of these lakes. The weights were incredible at yeah. both. Um, especially at this second one, but I guess we can talk about, we can talk about, uh, the first one. Toledo okay. Bend I got, first. I got fantasy results stacked up. Okay. So where did we shape? Where was Toledo bend at? So Toledo bend, I won. Honor took second pink took third. So we took fourth. Okay. At Lake fork. So took first pink took second. I took third, Honor took fourth, and Honor did set his lineup. Well, who was in Honor's lineup? Why did he do so bad? Who did he have? He had a very bad. He had a very bad lineup. 
Uh, he he only was in the seven hundreds. Um, Oof, that's tough. That's tough. I'm it's looking hard to come back right now. Uh, he had Austin Felix, Jay Shakira, uh, who did finish sixteenth. Then he had Lee Livesey, Jason Christie again, even after mm-hmm. Toledo Bend. He's right. Um, and then Greg Hackney. Oh, yeah, it's kind of a gut shot lineup, but what can you do? Yeah, it didn't didn't go well. Sobey's lineup at Lake Fork was very good, though. I'd be curious to see who it was. He finished very high in this event. So yeah, yeah I, did, I don't even fully remember who I picked. Sobey took six in general in our group, so he did very well at it. Not just yeah, so far, our group up. has got some heavy hitters, dude. There's yeah, some people do. picking some freaking lineups. Uh, Sobey had Milliken, Shakira, Lee Livesey, Seth, and then Kyle Welcher. If I didn't have Lee Livesey, dude, I would have ranked heavy. Lee Livesey, I think. Well, here's the thing. He only had a 1.28% own percentage, which I don't understand how a handful of us just got absolutely blasted in that one by him. But I did, too. I, I had him as well. How do you not? Or er, did I? I don't remember. But, yeah, either way, yeah. the season anyway. kicked off. I was looking at the results. Um, but, yeah, we got to pick our punishment yet. Did we decide on that? Uh. I don't think you, we, didn't we think of a good idea for one when we were up north? We did. We haven't discussed it on the pod yet. Um, and it needs to be agreed upon. And then maybe even we could think of two and then let the fans decide. Yeah, what was the one we had thought of? Uh, it, it, well, I don't think we had really fleshed it out, but we thought some sort of uh, ankle shock collar at the bar scenario might be kind of fun. Um, hmm. So I think we might run with that. <laughs> <laughs> what? what something along those lines so hey you know yeah, if you'd like to that. help us flush that idea out we got to the end of the season to really nail this thing down but i think it's going to be a good one this time and comment below any if you have punishment ideas like some people I, sent me a couple last year that were really good i'm trying to remember they were I, good we we've gotten some that were kind of soft but i mean we're looking for a good one um you know will i feel still at some point needs to make up for not doing anything a turkey yeah. trot yeah because i feel like that was an easy you know could have yeah, just went and did that. it one day but he yeah. didn't yeah so you know we can come up with a secondary punishment maybe for that so maybe a two for one you know i still feel like something along the lines of like just one weekend you have to drive 35 all the way down and back that's it like to just all no real ends. Yeah. Just no, you know, you know what I mean? Like you have nothing you One have to selfie. do. You just literally get to the end of it. Take you have to take a selfie in Duluth. And then your other one is at the end, and then you get to go home. Map map on. <laughs> that would kind of suck. Right? <laughs> it would be terrible. Because there's no reason. You're literally there's driving no and wasting that- money. No reason. That's punishment. That is actually kind of like a good punishment. You're not actually, allowed to throw a boat behind you so that you're like, well, I'm in Texas. So I'll at least go fishing. No. <laughs> no. Well, maybe we could get a like a bang sponsorship for this punishment or something. I think it would. I Dude, I think that one would be great. I could call. We could call Black Rifle up or something for it. But like be like a 17 hour drive and just be like, see ya. It's got to be more than 17 hours, dude. Yeah, it would be. It'd probably be around <laughs> 20 and 24. Because be. what, you have to drive to like... But dude, like, and that's the thing, because like, even that drive, like, I've done the drive to Florida for bass fishing and everything, or like when we drove to Maine, and that's like 26, and it's terrible. But at the end, you're like, but I get to go fishing and do all this stuff. Could you imagine doing it and just being like, well, I get to turn that's around and just go right back. Time home. to go home, I guess. <laughs> it's like Forrest Gum. I just kept running and then <laughs> it would be so terrible. Running, and I stopped. <laughs> so that was that was All my right. one thought. I thought that we'll 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 get this dialed. We will yeah, let, let, let's jump into this. I don't even think we should talk about Toledo Ben. I think we should jump right into Fork. Your thoughts, your feelings, what you're what you're feeling about it. It's so recent, it just happened. So and it's like almost jaw dropping. I will just give, so a brief breakdown. I don't have all the stats, Bart. I know you can help me with this, but essentially how this played out was it was an absolute slam. I mean, like they, 
caught so many big ones. It was incredible. There were ho- oh, seven, Ten seven century, century belts. belts. Ten. How many? Every ten. everybody who made the final day ten. got a century belt. So they gave out and ten. Explain, and explain history, what a century belt is. Just really that's a hundred pounds in four days. So over. So having Cooper Goyan, form- who got the last century belt, he didn't catch five bass the last day. He did it in eighteen bass, which is impressive wow. as hell. But in the history yeah. of Bassmaster, how many century belts have been given out? Ooh, Probably I don't know that one. No, what's more than that? Uh, twenty-five or less, maybe. I okay, can, I can look. Not a lot. Let's just yeah, say that. No, there like were in comparison ten in to this tournament. Yeah, it's insane. And 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 there were like probably five or six more slots below that that would have been if they would have been in the cut. Yes, for sure, there would have been more. And the craziest thing to think about too is <clears throat> usually when someone is given a century belt, they win the derb. You know. They usually win the derb and get a century belt, or at least get second. Like it's, this is insane how far down the century belts went. Yeah, I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to find tenth how place. many. It yeah. Was, but yeah, yeah, it was they tenth place. Tenth. But even just Literally, like early, there would have been more. Early on in the derb, I was just like checking after day one of weigh-ins, and I was like, "Dude, oh. think of this: Taku caught almost forty day one, and he didn't make the final day." Wow. Cut almost 40. It's an eight pound average. Or imagine on day one, you weigh in 30 pounds and you're like, I'm not even in the top 15. You drop a dirty 30 and you're not even in the top 10. Not even in the conversation. Yeah. It's like, oh, how'd you do today? Like not the best, not even in the top 10. Oh, what'd you weigh? You you had to, to make the final day. uh, I need to look at it quick, but you almost had to, I believe it was almost a dirty 30 a day to make the final. I'm That's pretty insane. sure it was actually, I'm going to look real quick, but it was like 20, Ooh, 28. Um, yeah, it was to make the final day. So Maddie Wong was 11th and he had 85, 12 after three days. Wow. The which is, I mean, it's just almost ninety. It's almost ninety. I mean, eighty-five point seven five divided by three. That's twenty-eight and a half pounds a day. That's incredible. And they're like, "No, you didn't make it." Right, Good dinner, it, but you don't make the final day. Right, and for people that don't really follow bass fishing that much, these numbers are like insane. They're yeah. disgusting. Like, unheard of. That many big bags in one event. Like this is. Just just think of this, 25 pounds a day, which a five-pound average, right? If you did that for four days, you'd get a century belt. Five pounds a day, five pound a day, so 25 pounds. If you did that average, you would have finished in 28th. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, here's, here's something crazy. Before You wouldn't have made the final day. You only had three days to do it, so... Before the tournament started, I was talking to good buddy B Rock. Shout out B Rock. He's our me and Bart's old Tourney Tuesday partner. And um he for his tiebreaker in our fantasy group, he put 120 some pounds. And I said, Brock, a century belt is a hundred. You know, like maybe it should be somewhere near there. You know what I mean? Like maybe some maybe even if you want to go crazy, yeah. like 107, 110. He said, No, 120. And I was like, that is the worst tiebreaker weight ever. Okay. <laughs> it turns out he wasn't even like close. Like he, he didn't was even under. Get close to winning. Dude, I under. had um I had under. what I thought was pretty high for it. Would you have? I had 118 four. That's crazy. Like, dude, I would and I, I was low disturbed, by 12 called, pounds. I would have called you, I would have called you stupid and crazy that that was your tiebreaker weight. I just thought with the bass, some of them being up on the bank, bed tournament, I was like, I don't know, man. It's a weird time of year. They can get weird. That's a lot of weight, man. It's a lot of weight. Yeah. But they, they eclipsed it. It was, so. and that that's the thing is, it was, I mean, and I feel like this kind of leads into, I I brought up to you guys that I wanted to talk about this, but I think this leads into, in my opinion, what, I mean, part of the reason these bags are happening 
but also just um just everything that's going on in the bass industry right now uh it happened after yeah. toledo band and now it's happening more after fork actually at the weigh-in at lake fork uh there was quite a few bass like longtime Bassmaster pros that were like I don't know if you want to say they're making a stance. Uh, it kind of just depends on how you feel about the whole thing, I think, um, as to whether they were making a stance or just uh, making a statement. Or To me, it was more of like a pity plea. Um, were they saying this on stage? Because I'd kind of yeah. seen the I didn't watch were, the final they weigh in, but I kind of saw this. There were, there were some guys who went up on stage and basically were like, if you have enough money, you can be good at bass fishing now and just blah, 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 blah. There's all this, all this bullshit complaining in my opinion out there right now. Yeah. Um, and I just, I thought this is something that we should now talk about as now that we're seeing that the results are here and we're starting to see what's happening. And also as ice fishermen, I, I've talked about this with paying rack before, We've seen, I feel like, what live imaging does to fish and how it changes things and everything. I feel like almost longer than the bass fishing world has. Like, I've been waiting for this to happen for like three years now um, in the bass world. And I, you know, I'm not fishing the opens and everything down south to fully exploit what live can do. But now that people are there, um, I think the biggest thing for me is that and i'll dive into this so it's just a little bit of a mini rant but the the biggest thing for me is i am having a huge issue with there is a lot of bassmaster elite pros out there right now that are plain and simple just making woe is me posts like i am like feel bad for me pity me i've been a pro forever blah 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 and really all it is, is you got complacent with a technique or knowing that you were in the elite series for a long time. You knew how to flip a jig. You knew how to dock fish or whatever better than everyone. So you knew you had job security. So ultimately what has happened now is you got complacent with a technique and knowing you were good and you knew it better than anyone. And then something new has shown up. You won't adapt and your job is on the line. Sorry, but I don't care. That's not my problem. This is your profession. That's a you problem. You ignored it was changing for the past four to five years. And now you want sympathy because you're not the best. And in my opinion, no, sorry, you're not the best anymore. That's competition. Learn, get better, or get beat. And I'm so sick of all these posts of like, it's not, how is it? our fault that the youth you preach you wanted to improve and get better are now beating you because anyone who's out there going hey anybody can buy this technology anybody can go catch them and anybody can be do good doing it no they can't because if they could the guys who've been your favorites for the last 10 to 20 years would be catching them and they're not because it's not easy you can't just pick it up and go do it and be good at it. And that, <clears throat> that is what's driving me nuts is because there's all these people out there who are saying that it's so easy. Anybody can do it. Anybody can be good at it. And all that's happened is, is the guys who at the end of August who are like, now I'm going to go hunt and I'm going to hang out and go watch football and do whatever with my family for the next four or five months. And they didn't treat it as a professional sport and all these other kids and young guys who got told time on the water time on the water time on the water spent time on the water and got better than them now they're making those guys irrelevant and those guys are having these pity parties on stage because the matt herons and wes logans and the guys who are doing it they know they're they're fucked like to be completely honest they are they're gonna get beat and they're gonna get kicked out so they're watching their job go so the only hope they have is to try to get a ban and that's what's bothering me is because there's a bunch of guys who dedicated all this time to get good at it. So that's my mini rant on it, but I had to say something about it because no. that, that is what's yep. come out so, of these two tournaments. So I want, yeah, I hear what you're on, saying. Ryan. I, I, I want to give some context too, right. in case somebody wasn't for sure. 
the winner of the Lake Fork tournament was was Trey McKinney, and he's a 19 year old man. Um, and that is like the youngest ever to win a tournament. And I want to say out of the top 10, how many guys were the EQ guys out of the top 10? You had uh, Kyle Patrick, like Ben Milliken, Wesley Gore, um, and Trey McKinney. Four, four Tyler, or five. Will- Tyler Williams was in the top 10. Yeah, t- so five out of the top 10 were your EQ guys, and they are extremely young. They're very versatile with the live scope and, and forward-facing sonar, just – they're FFS hammers and uh, they're just, they're young guns with a different style. And I think that, that kind of parlays into what Adam was saying. So continue yeah. Ryan. And so, yeah, I get, I get where you're coming from with these guys kind of bitching about, about that and that it should be like ban or whatever. And I, uh, I mean, I think that that's valid to say like, yeah, like get, get with the program or get fucked basically is basically what you're saying yeah. to these guys. But yeah. at the same time, there is like a line where it's like at what I mean, I get that it's it's not just easy. Like I get that, you know, but like, I don't know do you, if you follow like uh, anything. Have you seen the two the two videos Chris Zaldane put out this week? No, I haven't. I watched so he, the Seth Fighter one. So oh, yeah, he put out, kinda, yeah, so he put out two couple. videos. He put out two videos this week. One was at um, at the at the first tournament at uh, Toledo Ben where he went, he literally went to like a bunch of guys in the field, in the parking lot on the like day where they were checking boats or whatever. And just yeah. ran down people. They just real quick, just said, what, what electronics do you have on your boat in his video? And said, you know, they said, went through what deucers they had, what screens they had, what, and, and he asked them just point blank, how much, what, how much does that cost to like, 10, 12 guys in the video, yeah. right? And everybody everybody he talked to had probably thirty to $50,000 worth of electronics rigged on their boat. And most of them had anywhere from six to eight, 12 to 16 inch screens rigged with four to six transducers. Because they, and they even were point blank, were like, it's kind of stupid, but we have to. They said, yeah. if you want to compete, you have to. They said none. Pretty much everyone there made it seem like they really weren't into it, but they were like, "You have to do it." And then he posted another video today, actually, about um, kind of the process that they went through, the data collection process of what Bassmaster was analyzing on everybody's boats in the pre-tournament check, where they were actually measuring, like with a tape measure. Um, distances between like the height of their seat, where the screens were, how many screens, the batteries they were running, the transducers they had, all of this data that Bassmaster is then collecting to probably at some point regulate this in some way, which I definitely see coming. I mean, to be fully honest, like I, when I was watching that, I mean, granted, I'm not like anti live scope. I think it's badass. I think using it as a tool is badass. I think it's here to stay. Don't get me wrong on that. But at the professional fishing level, I do think it takes away a shitload of fishing knowledge that's needed to actually fish at that level. You do not need to know a shitload about a fishery, about how to find them during seasonal patterns. The way that a lot of these guys are talking about it, they're they're idling for uh, without ever making a cast in practice to find fish, without ever having been on a body of water, ever to learn anything about a spot or anything. They're finding fish that are offshore, suspended, whatever. They don't have to be a Greg Hackney that spent, you know, all this time learning how to do this or that. I'm not saying that that that's a technique that should still be like top dog or whatever, but if it gets to that point where everyone's just literally idling around finding fish, yeah, you still need to get them to bite. I'm not saying it's just an automatic thing, but at what point is it even fishing to be honest? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think you're just I think driving this, around looking for fucking fish like that. It, I mean, there's a certain blank. level of regulation to it, I think. And I it, like I think it'll be a thing that's good. I mean, that's what like that's why Bassmaster's doing that. They told everybody this year that like that's the thing, too, is people being like, oh, how could this happen? It's like Bassmaster literally looked at everyone and said, make your boats as souped up and crazy as you want to this year. Because more than likely, it ain't going to happen again. 
Yeah, no, this so, is going to be this is going to be the steroid era of baseball. Yeah, we're fishing. literally is watching steroid era. era baseball right now in bass 100%. fishing. And it's fucking pretty awesome. Crazy. You better yeah, enjoy and I think, it. I, I, yeah, I think it is pretty crazy. After this year, there will be dramatic changes. And I think yeah. it's warranted. And I think it'll be interesting to see like what they decide to be like the line, right? Where if they're yeah. going to say, well, you can have one deucer and like so whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it'll be multiple. And, and for folks that don't follow bass fishing as much, but at least maybe know what forward facing sonar is or live scope or mega live, a lot of these pros on their front trolling motors have two live scope units facing left and right, and then one on top in perspective mode, and then two in the back shooting out live imaging when they idle around. And then even a a large majority of them, or maybe not a large majority, but a a good amount of them have, what is it? The brakes? What are the brakes called? Yeah. The The power pole brakes. Yeah. The power pole brakes, like two basically trolling motors on the back end of their power poles that can drop in and reverse them. So that when they're scoping around, they can throw brakes on because kind of this major, the major technique that's happening is people are keeping their trolling motors on 10 and they're scanning around live imaging, live imaging, live imaging, and then boom, they see a fish, they stop. They're not fishing structure. They're not fishing a pattern. They're not even fishing anything extremely specific, at least to my knowledge. They are clearly run and gun hunting. Seemingly just driving around until they see. I'm sure there's more to it. I, so I would say with that, Sobe, and this is this is where like I think the next part is that I wanted to talk about with it is is like I'm frustrated with all the woe is me posts, and I sure. think that like that shit just needs to you just need to move on, dude, because yeah. they're not getting rid of it. So like, yeah, Agreed. all you're doing in my opinion is making yourself look like a fool. Yeah. And, and I'm just bringing context to like why yeah, maybe yeah, no, they you're good. With so it. with the regulation thing, I've talked to some people and. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but a general, general consensus, I think what will end up happening in a year from now is you're going to end up seeing one or two transducers and like 48 inches of screens. Sure. You can do whatever you want. With you, it. you can decide how and you I, want to use per, it. Yeah. Personally, I think it should be one yeah. transducer. Yeah. And it should be 48 inches of screens. Then when you're looking at the money and everything that like the Zaldane thing, I agree the way they're getting it to like a rich man sport. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But like also, dude, if you're buying a brand new boat, like with side imaging and everything the way it is now, and you're not putting like roughly around 40 inches of screens on your boats, that's what most people are doing nowadays, whether you have four or 12 inches and stuff. And I know no. that's what you're saying, but like with the new NBT mount and screen out there, that's a 22 inch screen up front. Like Kiyoya, right. who's the best best out there at it, he's got a 22 and two six or a 25. I don't know, and two 16s up front. That's that's literally 45 inches up front. <laughs> right, it's so, ridiculous. And, and you can choose how you want to do it, but I think right. the biggest thing um, that that they've <clears throat> I think the biggest misconception out there, and I know this from talking to Pangrack and guys who are fishing the tournaments and stuff, is people think that there's not a pattern to what they're doing. And there is. It's just not publicized yet. Because once again, it's the things of when people were fish- figuring out Kentucky Lake ledges, when people were figuring out this I agree, or that. But you can't discount the fact that it requires very it requires a significantly lower amount of knowledge about a body of water to figure out that. Yeah, you can does. break it down you can break it down faster, but also exactly. like the I think the one thing that always made professional fishing unattainable to so many young people is dude, you you had to have like stupid amounts of experience to ever make it. There were great fishermen who never had a chance cuz they got kicked out in 2 years cuz they went to 20 new lakes every year. Now, you're actually getting the best of the best in my opinion cuz like these guys they were going to the catch best them of no the best matter at what. live sonar. No. That's false. You're getting really good bass fishermen. And these guys are going to show I that when I they get know, to bite. I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm just playing I'm just playing I'm you, just playing devil's advocate like that. Like Adam, when you were 19 years old, how how good at you, how good were you at breaking down a body of water? Obviously, Trey McKinney is head and shoulders over where you or me or Ryan were at at 19. But like, how does a 19 year old pull up to a lake he's potentially never fished before? It's a giant lake. He goes against a whole stack field of people that have been fishing pro for 
longer than he's been alive, he goes out there and he absolutely mop shop against them. Is that is that like his, just because he's good at fishing and and his time on the water leveling, maybe it, I, I, what live is doing is it's leveling the playing field exactly, of experience exactly and, it's taking away the good. needed experience level to be a professional but it's also like i mean i would think if say take the guys who are experienced like justin atkins who made the final day mm -hmm. he uses that to his advantage gets better and now he's there the last day too i mean i do think like i said it's gonna level out once they take away a certain amount of the screens and you have to decide are you gonna put your live scope deucer at like your cockpit and you're just going to idle and scan or are you going to stand on your trolling motor and go four miles an hour all of I know, but the, you're going to have a hard back. time convincing me that you could look kvd in the face and say that trey mckinnon would kick your ass because you you are not as good as him because he's so good at forward facing sonar you'll never convince me of that i literally never said that i just no, said that saying, right saying I'm it saying, levels the playing field so okay, so you're gonna take an all-time legend and say because you are not no, a live scope well, did, fisherman, no, you you're cannot putting words in anymore. my mouth. No, I'm saying what you're taking away is you're taking the 20 plus years that people have put on fisheries, breaking them down and everything, to now they get live so they can go around and see what's going on. But also where people are way overblowing this right now is, and this is like when the Alabama rig got banned, we're looking at same type of thing right now in terms of we're only evaluating this on pre-spawn and winter fishing when these fish are suspended and out there and doing that thing when they start getting shallow like dude people act like fork was just one with scope there were fish getting caught under docks off of beds literally sight fishing like there were guys doing a lot of different stuff there and it Not wasn't that just made the final day in a minnow yes there was go look at them there's a clip of Trey McKinney pulling an eight pounder out from under a dock. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you he take did, four but facing I, sonar, that's you literally take four the facing 90, sonar out of question. They don't, of they trays, don't put up ten trays century clocks. Came off at of FFS, and so did yes, a lot of those other guys. But still, he caught him doing other things too. But I, I'm just saying, like the whole like the whole concept of you're going to take away forward facing sonar and they're not going to be good. Like what Ben Milliken ain't going to be on the Elite Series. Literally, so you, one you'd of the say, best you out say there ben, right now. You say Ben Milliken and Trey McKinnon are on the Elite Series without forward-facing sonar. They would have made it eventually. It might have not made it as rapidly, but like it's also the thing of, um, say, when side imaging first came out, and then KVD won, I don't know, like ten tournaments in four or five years because he went and scanned all of them and figured out where the ledge hard spots were and all the structure that nobody else was pinpoint fishing. And he dialed it in before anyone. So like, are you going to discount all that work he did with that technology too? It's the same thing. It's just new technology came out. They're taking advantage of it much more rapidly than other people have. So now other people are looking dumb and that's exactly what it is. It's the same thing. I don't like, think it's a. I don't think it's an apples to apples comparison because maybe not apples to apples, is, but it's if very you more are level not than doing this. Think you is. cannot compete. Period. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, this yeah. is well, not just a technique. This is you cannot compete if you're not doing this. You will never win another tournament at, ever at this time of year because it, the same. No, we'll we'll the, see. And the good the, the good same thing, thing could be said for. And this is just what I'm once again pointing to. The same thing could be said for. When they were winning them on ledges on the TVA and nobody knew how to find those ledges, dude, you ain't you ain't beating KVD on Kentucky Lake ledges, flipping the bank. And when he was out there doing that, you can't compete. It's the same thing, but it's realizing a pattern and time of year or what you need to be doing and catching them that way. Because ever that's the other thing is everyone's like, oh, they're just chasing them around or whatever. Like I was talking with Pangrack about this, like. What I've learned from this is I was watching the best of the average for the last like 10 to 20 years at a certain time of year. Now I'm watching the best of the best at like winter, largemouth, those type of fishing. Like we literally were flipping a bank and being like, oh, they pull up to this wood and this is what's going on. There's bass doing it. And we're only catching 20% of the population and there's 80% being like, you guys are idiots. This is actually what we're doing. Because what I was going to say about the patterns and stuff, these guys aren't just drifting around in the middle of the lake. 
they're out in 30 to 40 feet on like channel swings coming in. They're on um, totally flat bluff points. They're not, they're not just like crappie fishing in the middle of 150 feet. Like people make it seem like they are. They're right on a channel swing edge, a flat into where they're going in to spawn. Um, you saw the 10 guys in the one area in housing Creek at Toledo Bend. Cause like, that's the area where they were primo staged up to go spawn. That was a part of the lake that was ready to go. The other parts weren't quite there yet. So you're going to go to the highest concentration of fish and that's what it's showing. So that, that's but my agree. biggest thing. I agree. But, but also to play there's, devil's there's... advocate, I want to get in here. Just what Ryan said. It'll be interesting to watch the full season unfold. Yeah. And then we can see if Ryan's statement was kind of true. Cause you could say like, Every tournament this year could be won on forward facing sonar. And if that well, if that happens, which I think it will, that then kind of what Ryan's saying is unbelievable. You know what I mean? Because he's like, it's more than a technique. It's like it's it's crazy. It's it's yeah. Well, and I do think there's another thing that plays into this is bass and MLF and the organizations, you have to schedule events better. Cause we said this last fall, like, dude, when this schedule got announced last September, I straight up looked at you guys and said, every single one of these tournaments are going to be one with forward facing. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Because that it, it's just the time of year and everything. There's a couple that might not, but like they really leaned into it. And a uh, part of me thinks they did for a reason. Yeah. It might be strategic. And, and, but the thing is, I mean, you can end up looking at it and go like, dude, and I mean, this is just me knowing it up here, but uh, maybe I'll be wrong and there's a way to use it better up in this area. But uh, if you come up to Minnetonka in June, like forward facing ain't going to play that hard. It will to see bait and stuff, but you're not going to be scoping fish but, with a minnow. But like you just as said, from what I know right now, the best. I know that's how, what I'm thinking lane. too. As from what we know right now, like it could totally be a player. Yeah. Like we actually have no clue. Uh, yeah. it's just a really I, interesting yeah it is and it and it's a it's a slippery slope because you're talking about regulating technology and this and that or whatever but so far it seems at least at the professional level at the, the way that it's being used right now is seemingly if unbeatable right what with the techniques that are available once fish hit the bank and you can actually sight fish and they go somewhere maybe stuff maybe you'll be able to but maybe. as of this time of year and stuff and the other thing is we're looking at southern reservoirs that don't have grass and like much grass yeah. and stuff like they are they're but, not but they the leaned that right these into guys that are catching primarily i'm not saying 100 percent, but the vast majority of the fish that are being caught using this technique are fish that would have otherwise been virtually uncatchable yeah yeah unless you were trolling <laughs> but what i'm saying is yeah. In a tournament scenario, yeah, you would not target these fish. Absolutely not. No, you. But we. They're, they're, I would also three, say we never ago, even no. knew they existed. Yeah, right. we always joked and said, "Oh, they're probably just swimming around out there." But we yeah. never or actually like, thought they for were. For instance, for how like, many there were on a spot where you are yeah. fishing the bank, and you're like, "Man, this spot reloads." Well, fuck that. You can just fish where they're at before they ever pulled up to that shit. Now, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't, yeah. You, you don't know, need them and, and that's one thing that's interesting too. Just like you said, like we didn't even know they existed. Like, I think we're going to see a lot of that. Lake Fork is a premier fishery in Texas. It's pressured, even though it's a giant lake. Like, people fish the absolute hell out of it. There's tournaments all the time that go out of there. Like, and these guys just unleashed and opened it up. I think there's a lot bigger fish. There's a lot, a lot of stuff of, that we have no idea. That, that we don't know. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's exciting to watch people putting up bags like that, right? I mean, it's badass. If you like bass fishing, that's cool. Yeah. That many big big bass getting caught is badass. Now, I mean, the way that they're being caught, I don't know if this is exciting to me, but it's still cool. See, and that's, I guess that's where I see different in, in, in a sense of that, just because I, I absolutely, the one thing I can't wrap my brain around is People being like, this is boring to watch. Because I'm not I saying filmed, watching it. I'm not saying I, watching it. I'm saying the way they're being caught is not exciting to me. I don't know. I can, I've caught fish that way, and it's pretty fun. I don't know. Catching a seven pounder is pretty fun, no matter what. I'm not way saying you do it's it. not. I'm not saying but it's not. I'm but just it's, saying, like, what the entertainment value I don't understand is 
and you're you will see it in the ratings from this week. Mm-hmm. Bass's numbers are screaming up. Sure. All sure. of them screaming up. A lot of diehard fishermen are like, man, I don't know, not that much fun to watch that much fun to watch. To me, one of the most boring things in the world watching fishing always was watching guys just flip a jig at a tree and tell me that, man, there was one in here three days ago and I'm hoping it'll reload. When I'm watching these guys going, yeah, they're loading into this creek every day and they're replenishing and I'm just, yeah, I'm going to catch them as they come in and this is how I'm getting them to react to my bait and bite. And that right. or like see, they're like, pulling in me- here to spawn. The most and it's ex- like, like that's cool. Exciting part about the elite series was was watching these guys that said, "Dude, I'm I got I'm catching five a day. I got this fucking pa-. and then they win. That's what You're I like, mean. I got this. That's shit what Trey McKinney out. just did. He caught I'm like eight a day, getting five bites a day. That's it. And they figured out some shit that no one else figured out. Not that I'm just I've got I've got same thing just with the technology is lost." in this live sonar game to me. I've got, I've the got what's lost on. in the live sonar part. Huh? The what I didn't, the excitement you cut out the technique me. is lost for me in it. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I guess I haven't. I th- I also think we're just on the front edge of like the easiest way to do this is with a Demiki rig right now. And people haven't figured out new baits to throw. Cause like, dude, Matty Wong was throwing a giant glide bait at him. He finished 11th. So he didn't make quite make the last day. But he caught all of his on a giant glide bait going up, and it was pretty fucking sick. I don't know if it was on fork, but another dude was just whipping a big jig. Like, he's throwing a live scope, throwing a big jig. Justin handy, Hamner. Throwing, yeah, throwing it down there, and he, he, whack, yeah. and he was cracking. I'm like, he that was He did it at Toledo sweet. Bend, and then he made the last day on fork. On a big uh, jig? I think he might have caught a couple. But I, he was throwing a jerk bait mainly. But he was yeah. doing some weird stuff with it. And like I think so. I think it's just because of how overwhelmingly dominant it is across the entire field. That is why it's more of like a ruffling feathers thing. Because like it's not like it's new. It's not like this is yeah. the first year anyone's ever had forward facing. But I could I could okay, I'm gonna do a couple things. I want to play devil's advocate because I could say, you know, as a viewer of the Crappie Chronicles, you guys do the same shit every time. Doing the same uh, thing. You would Water be hundred percent correct. Stand around, drill a hole. I see fish. Drill a hole in their head. You're hundred percent correct. Matter That's exactly what you're correct. A pinhead. Uh, it's a pinhead. It's a jerk bait. It's a yes. Minnow jerk yeah. head. Drill in their head. Throw it down. Boom. Either yes. bites doesn't bite. You know what I mean? It's not like literally we're fishing, not. We're yes. fishing the sunset on a weed line. You know what I mean? Next to a hard spot, these fish are cruising next to it. Yeah. We might get a couple bites tonight. You're like, not here, not here. And I do the same exact thing. Same I get thing. it. So, yeah. So it's like. We kind of have been doing the same thing they're doing. And that's why I'm saying it time, loses so. the excitement for me because I'm like, I know what that is. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. You know, it, it I feel like the same it, exact thing, right? It loses the excitement of the unknown. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like that's a better way to put it because the other thing for me is I think it amplifies excitement on some level because like this year when I pulled onto a place and I was like, holy shit, it's really going today. Like, you know, so much more as possible. And like, it opens it up to catch fish that have never been attainable before. Totally. And that to totally. me is so exciting. Totally. Like, it's that's because you're the, the one the doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, also, I mean, I, I also think just Bass needs to figure out a way of, and all these people need to figure out a better way of televising this. And they've done Agreed. way better Agreed. at it this year. Yes. Way better. I don't better think they're doing Here's a good another job. thought I have is the technology FFS say across the board, it costs three grand. Yeah. One sure. thing that might be exciting, or I think that could be cool is, I mean, and we've all been there, Adam, you, you know, this is where we started. Like you could have a 12 foot John boat with a six ho- horsepower motor and you have, you know, Navionics, or you have one boat network on your on your phone. So you got lake maps, and then you can have an ice bundle that is connected to a pole, or it's connected to your your trolling motor, and you can compete seriously. Yeah. Compete against yeah. the, dude, the, that, the, the, the hours, dude that the time and the has really a, good at it. A, a 2012 sick Ranger and a Tuesday nighter. You're like doesn't matter. I have exactly what you have. I have maps and I have forward facing yeah. sonar. And, well, and, I can, and I can whoop your ass. That is yeah. cool because there's going to be kids and guys that have that technology and a vessel to float on. 
whether it be a kayak or anything else, right. and they can go out there and crack. crack it them opens just the good. door, man. And, it and look, it makes me think, think I can the, go do something now compared to like, dude, you go to freaking Grand Lake and you're like, oh, great. I have to beat Jason Christie. Guess what? You're fucked. You're not. You're not going to beat him now. Yeah. yeah. It's wide and open. I, and, and that's just, exciting yeah. because it's not discounting what – like it's not discounting what Jason Christie's done. He has all that knowledge of there. And guess what? When they're when they're not suspended and they're not biting well, and he can go, I need to go run and get one shallow on a blade. He can. But all those guys who are learning that forward facing, like I said at the beginning, they put in all this time going, I'm solely dedicating to this and I'm gonna be the best at this. So, like when Dean Rojas was the best frog fisherman. And um, KVD was the best cranker and Christie's the spinner baiter. Um, and all these guys are flipping or whatever it is. They were all the master of a technique. Scoping is a technique. I agree. There are guys agree, who are but very, you can't, very, you can't very tell me good that there, at it. That there shouldn't be at least a regulation on how much you can use. Yeah. Oh, you should have one transducer. One transducer. Right. That's what I'm getting at. I, I don't think it should no, be part of the game. I totally game. agree. I think it's because a valid technique. For you, it's badass. For you, for you like, to scope, you need to be actively scoping. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're yeah. actively fishing. Like, that's yeah. what's going this, on. You can't just drop like, it I'm down and drive around. just have and just fucking idle around. No, and, that's and stupid. And the, the crazy and thing everybody is, thinks that's stupid. Adam, Adam's even talking about it. Except the people making fucking lunch money, brother. I think that, dude, going to be honest, <laughs> I even think they think it's kind of stupid. They just know that they're going to beat the shit out of everyone doing it for the certain time frame. Right. It's the and same thing as businesses that's what pisses, and stuff. That, like, that's the level that it's like, to me, it's not cool. This See, is crazy. I, but that's, and... I agree it's to a certain level, but like, dude, that's the same level as some of those guys when they were turning, like, that's the same level as back in the day when certain elite series guys or FLW guys had enough money to buy waypoints from guys on the lake, and that wasn't against the rules, so they got it, and they were always winning every tournament because guess what? They got a little more coin to buy the waypoints. It's the certain yeah, level but of no, competition. but nobody, nobody sat there on Bass Live going, well, this guy bought a bunch of waypoints. This is going to be fucking exciting. Yeah, but they went, this guy has a <laughs> lot of education on this lake. That's literally what they talk about, dude. Yeah, I, I'm recently? just saying it's there's a <laughs> there's a certain level of all of it. I know, there is. but I, I also I think just, this one's a lot less worse than a lot of things that have happened. What's your thoughts on this, Ryan? A couple things. What's your thoughts on Lee Livesey's finish? He, I mean, he he back to back one on this lake. He's a guide on this lake. He's guided more people fishing on this lake than anybody else. Day one, he weighs in well, eight pounds. Here's what I'll say. Just like, why did I that happen, do you think? Or how can that happen? Did he break I, down or something? I didn't see what happened. Or did I he guess, literally I don't just know all the details fast. on like how, how his how his his tournament went or whatever. But I would say I just because someone has a bunch of knowledge on a lake, or like even historically, there's plenty of guys that have bombed on their home lake. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? That's, like just because fish. you have that knowledge, you still have to catch them. Like it still has to go your way and all kinds of shit. Like, you know, yeah. So I don't know if I'd put a lot of weight in that. I mean, maybe he just had a bad tournament or fucking the wheels came off or whatever. I don't know. But uh, I I also I think, I don't know. I also just think, I think fisheries are changing due to pressure as well. Like I, like all those old school hammers sure. on Minnetonka that we that have 25 plus you used years to be able to catch 80 fish on a roller jig off of this rock point doesn't Ain't happen there anymore. anymore or even but... just like OG rock piles that you and you and I know like like different stuff they're not there anymore they're just not there i don't know if it's cuz of the great mapping cuz the pressure even just like dude there's just so many dudes that used to dominate even in our state and they can barely weigh in a limit on on the Denny's on a Minnetonka you know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. Holy smokes. I, I don't know if it's from pressure and changing yeah. fish. I, and that's I don't know. just across the board. changing. Yeah. That's, that's across the board. board. I'm just like, I'm not saying anything about we, four facing it's in just, this lane of like professional are fishing. Hmm. It's like, okay. Yeah. There's probably, I mean, we've, 
at least we believe what we're seeing like ice fishing is that, yeah, fish are getting conditioned to maybe like forward facing pressure and stuff. Like there's enough people that have it. It gets used. Yeah. Can only imagine how many guys have it down South that bass fish like daily year round. So yeah. like, I got to think that that pressure is changing the way fish act and that kind of thing. You know, like if fishing pressure alone was enough to change some stuff, I got to imagine sonar pressure is a whole nother thing, you know? Yeah. But it's like, Here's another interesting at, thing too. No, continue. Oh, I was just going to say, I think at the pro level, there's so many other sports, whether they're like motor sports or just other professional, like athletic sports, that there's so much fucking regulation already anyway, that it's like, that's where this is going. Like you, you don't just watch a formula one race and they say, just build the most badass fast car you can and we'll race them. Yeah. Every fucking component of that car is regulated to like certain specifications yeah. and shit like that well that's where this that's, is going that's even in bass fishing you can only have a 250 horsepower motor you can only do these certain things right like, and that's it's like people are like acting like oh it's going to be a bad thing or whatever it's like no this is making it more of a legit sport and then like, and then there's like, a benchmark a to say, like if they're saying you can have one transducer and you can have this much screens or whatever people will optimize that to say what is the best setup i can make for this thing exactly this. that and is bass something yeah. needs that it That's, really does right because old just, school the old 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 school og mlf tournaments i thought were so cool because literally all those guys showed up to a lake they had no previous knowledge they didn't know what lake they're going to they all had like a nitro 18 foot boat the yep. same graph, the same map, and they literally went, go fish, go break it down to fish. And I, those old school MLF ones literally showed you how those dudes with the same exact boats, same electronics, same troll motors, same equipment, same motor, like went head to head against each other. Who caught the bat, the best, who figured out the fastest. Like yeah. I always thought those were the literal sickest videos, sickest tournaments ever. Cause it I showed agree. you who it, we have the same exact stuff. We have the same exact knowledge base, which is nothing of this lake. Right. And and we just show up and we just go, boom. All right, who can figure it out the best and the fastest? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and I agree. I, that's when I thought it was like, this is a legit, this was legitly, yeah. Then it's like fishermen against fishermen right here, no, right now. I, I agree. And I think, I mean, I think we're going to see through this season that like, that's what's going to end up happening. And that's why bass is keeping records of everything. And I think it's pretty apparent that they're like acknowledging something will probably change, but like, I think people just need to be like, dude, you just got to lean into it. No, like live is going to be around. This is the way it's going. And also like be dead honest. If you think this is bad, think of what they're making next. Cause it's just going to keep getting better. And there's going to be a level it gets to where it's going to go, this is unsportsmanlike. Sure, but at, at the same time, if, if, if the tournament organizations regulate what is allowed, even if the technology gets better, it won't be part of the... Comp 100%. It's just at this point now, you can't yes. unopen Pandora's box. Yeah, so now and I don't you just think, have to regulate. I don't think that that is ever going to happen. I mean, I think it's yeah. here to stay. I just think they'll at what level, you know, because it is what yeah. what they're doing currently is is ridiculous. It really is. Yeah, the whole just driving around and that whole deal. The yeah. actual fishing of it, like I I've enjoyed watching the live experiencing the coverage and all the hype going on with the tournaments and everything way more this year. I think bass like Compared to years before, it is very obvious that Bass uh, had meetings about how they were going to cover these tournaments and how they were going to talk about it and how the mm -hmm. broadcasters were going to talk about it and everything because it's much, much, much more improved. Um, but like I was telling you, Pink, I think the biggest way they're going to have to adapt this, in my opinion, is going to more like a golf approach. Um because like in this sense just hear me out for a sec um watching guys troll around with their trolling motor and look for these fish and hunt them down and stuff gets very boring uh which i'm aware of and that's also where i think like in golf walking to and from shots and analyzing shots is very boring but watching the actual shot it's pretty freaking fun pretty cool so I think what they need to lean into more is figuring out how you can get a GoPro mounted 
or some sort of camera mounted in all the guys who are in spots 11 through 100 the other days so that, yeah, you can have these 10 premier guys that you're talking to and going in and out and stuff. But like, here goes Ben Milliken looking for another bass and you can be like, and checking in on hole 13, we got Greg Hackney flipping a jig into a dock. And sure. you know what I mean? And you there, spice there it up There definitely needs to be a change in how it's being covered now. for sure. Yeah. But I think even before live was such a prominent player in the game, that was also the case. Yes. They, they haven't been exactly blowing the doors off of bass tournament coverage for a long time. No, like people being <laughs> you know, like, oh, it was so much more exciting before. It's like, dude, you're watching someone fish, man. Because like, to be let's fully be real, honest, there's not the that much ex excitement. The there. most exciting development in broadcasting bass fishing was watching Jeff Gustafson's graph screen when he won that turn. Yeah, when he won the classic on live scope. Because it was new. <laughs> it was, no, but what yeah. I'm saying is the way that it was done, not the oh, technique. Oh, for sure. Technique yeah. aside, it was exciting to watch because they actually did a good job of showing it. Like, yeah, they're they're now, using they're they, using they, it a lot more this year. They got rid of like there's no hummingbird soul contract with them only showing hummingbird screams. They're showing Garmin. They're showing Lawrence. They're showing everything. They've been showing them all. Yeah, I'm just saying like it it needs to get better. The commentating needs you know like all of it. It needs to come along like like every other part of the sport. And that might be somewhere where they've been slacking almost the most is there, eh? Yeah. And I like think it will get better. Making it I just think to watch. That I was telling, uh, I was telling a couple other buddies this the other day. I think there's a lot of people aggravated and agitated about the way it's being broadcast and what's going on and pointing the fingers at forward facing sonar when it should be getting pointed at the way it's being broadcasted. Yeah, because well, I, actually, I think it's two conversations. For, yes, it's two because totally the forward face, the forward facing is making it more exciting. The weight's bigger, more big fish, all that. But it needs, to, you know, there needs to be some regulation on like in practice and the way it's all going. You can't just drive around with seven deucers out like that. I don't think that's right. But right. also, we need to be broadcasting it better to make it more yeah. entertaining but for everybody. Because like before, like before this year. Like grand, yes. Were there other were there guys running like multiple deucers? Yeah, probably. I don't know for sure. No one really well, talked about a, it. That's but, how Taku won all the smallmouth tournaments. He just hadn't sure. told anyone yet. Okay, yeah. but over the course of a season, he didn't just win fucking everything, right? Exactly. Other techniques yeah. still played. Guys that were not scoping were still winning. You know what I'm saying? I just think we're seeing a golden age of people realize, like, holy shit! If I'm really good at scope, I'll win. It's kind of like, you know what? I, it's like people. I was listening to Davey Height and uh, Mercer the other day or today when I was driving around. They were talking about this conversation. They were talking about how when flipping first became invented, people thought it was unfair. Like flipping a jig because it became so dominant. Well, that's been every aspect of fishing since the beginning. When a I new know. bait came out, that was effective. But I think the difference is it never allowed you to to do the extent of what you can do with this technology. I agree. I'm just saying that we've seen stuff make it super efficient and then the fish adjusts or the fishermen adjusts and it comes back down. And that will happen this year. But, I mean, like I said, we said this last September. When this schedule got released, I flat out said, you boys be, better be ready for a lot of forward-facing sonar because that's exactly what's going to happen. If they wanted right. to lay off, oh, there's going to be a bunch of it happening. That wasn't going to like. <laughs> but I, I ain't the schedule your for point, it. I think it might be semi-strategic in a way. That I think they say, wanted to. See, we are like, going to let it be the wild fucking west, and we are going to put people in a position for this to excel, and then we're going to take that fucker away down I, to what we believe is an acceptable level. And that's why yeah, I want people you to enjoy your this. Dude, <laughs> you know, steroid yeah. era baseball was fantastic. Right. Barry Bonds hitting 73 home runs. Sammy Sosa blasting them out everywhere. Mark McGuire. Dude, yeah. there was so much stuff happening that, like, in retrospect, you're like, hey, what was going on Exactly, and that's, and that's and what this is. But you wouldn't sick. But you wouldn't look at the MLB now and go, oh, if some motherfucker was just juicing the shit out of himself in college, he should just walk into an MLB team and just fucking wheel. Just yeah. like, th that's a good point. You know? 
he, yeah. he could be yoked, but he still has to hit the freaking baseball. And that, and that kind of goes to what Adam was saying too. It, I do think it is a technique. Like Adam had forward facing sonar in his boat last year. I had forward facing sonar in my boat. I had mega live. Adam and I didn't catch the biggest fish of our yeah. lives last year. Uh, not even close. I've caught way bigger fish in years past than I caught last year. Same with you, Adam. Yeah. And, and obviously in Minnesota, there are a lot of grass lakes and, and they're very, you know, weed driven lakes, but it's still like I've played around with it and, and I've played around with it. Like even extensively, it's not easy, dude. It's not, it's easy ice fishing, but it's not easy. Open water catching bass. It's not yeah. easy. It's not that's, easy. That's like I said at the beginning. And I think that's a biggest misconception. And this is like why, like I've said it on other podcasts. I've said it on other things, but like, I hate the Randy Blockets of the world that created this message that forward facing is easy. A fifth grader could do it. Just hand out the trophies now, blah, 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 this bullshit. Because the reality is, like I said at the beginning, if it was easy, these guys who said five years ago when forward facing came out, they were like, yeah, that's cool. But guess what? I won $2 million on my career on a jig. So I'm going to flip a jig. Screw that thing. Now it's five years later. They haven't. And like, that's, that's my thing that I don't have the sympathy for is like, they flat out looked at you and said, I'm not going to maintain being the best at my job. And now they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. But I still want my job. And they're like, right. well, and no, I think you're that's not the a valid best point. anymore. Yeah. Like that, they still Sobe, that would, Sobe, that would be like, you started being a videographer, right? And you were mm -hmm. filming on, I don't know, GoPro one. And now everybody's using Sony a seven S threes and these super nice iPhone cameras. And nobody's watching your videos anymore. Cause the audio sucks and the video quality is terrible. And you're like, well, what the hell? Damn this technology. Well, it's I like even got to keep some, up on your job. You well, know, even, even some of that, I, I could say, I could, kind of bring light to that even where it's like accessible or anybody can do it. Like when we were growing up, it was hard to a get a hold of a camera and yes. then B operate it and then C learn how to edit. That was like Fugazi. If you could somehow harness all those three things, you would be head and shoulders above. And that's why nobody did video work. It was literally your TV productions, your camera guys. And then nobody else then it's like maybe your mom had a home video camera and she might have caught something while you walked across the stage of graduation and then it's like the gopro era comes out and now even like we learned how to edit we worked our way up from handy cams to a7s3s and then everybody and their brother got an iphone and learned how to film with it and can edit mm -hmm. with it and can do it and can crank views higher than me and adam put together and it's like that's nothing i mean part of us as videographers and long you know, we're trained in this. There's definitely a part of me that was like, dude, these guys don't know, even know how to film. They don't even know how to work a camera. They barely know how to edit. But it's like, no, you, you, we have to adapt. And I do a lot so of me, it's, it's, taking on an iPhone now. And it's like, it's I'm like, this, it's like the same thing. Really. If you look at it, I mean, t two different things going on. Right. But like, yeah, think of it this way back when, you know, you had these long time TV shows and ice fishing and open water, Yep. We're the Trey McKinney young meddling kids that come in with these GoPro angles that everybody's like, what? You just put a camera on you that's recording all the time. Yeah. There isn't a camera guy there who's responsible for it. So like we do that sort of stuff. Yeah. All of a sudden it's kind of cool for a bit. People see it coming and then boom. And like we end up getting good marketing deals or sponsorship dollars or whatever happens. Well, now this old time is like, well, those guys don't even know what they're doing. And now it's come full circle five years later or whatever. And everybody's realized like, okay, yeah, actually they really know what they were doing. And a lot of people had to adapt and go with the times. Yeah. And now, like you said, Sobe, we're starting to have to adapt again to yeah. like new cameras and the whole deal. Or but short just, form content or this mixed with that mixed with it. Yeah. It. It's right. a whole and I and I don't know that this like this thing where the like accessibility is as important because it's like it's still a professional fucking sport. Like you know what I mean? 
Like these yeah. guys are still at the top of the game. It's just like not every kid from New Prague is going to make the Elite Series. Like it's just how yeah. it is. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like just you know, like don't even factor that in. But it's just like I think the 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 biggest like jarring port part of this is that it's like you do have these long standing professional anglers that are like fuck they got some good careers and they know what the fuck's up. And then, like, what was the what, what was the stat that was like the average age of the top ten at this last tournament? Oh gosh, so yeah, like twenty three years old 20s. or something. Well, yeah. that was it was twenty three years old for the ten guys who made the elite series from last okay. year. Okay, okay, yeah. so so you immediately have this like crop that, of, and it's not just like one guy. Some like it's jarring. It's not just like some some fucking prodigy kid. Like, oh god, this kid is just on the, another level. You got an entire year of guys come in that are good at this one technique, this forward facing sonar thing. I mean, yeah, they're probably good at other aspects of shit too, but they're able to come in and immediately make that impact, right? Like, it's not like rookie season, they're coming in, like, no, they're coming in and they're winning and like beating people immediately. Yeah. And, and we're not, we're, we won't go down this total pipeline either but it, it's almost like the same thing in the musky world there's dudes that have 20 30 years of experience catch this many 50 inches a year and then there's young guns who have five live scopes on their boat that absolutely mop shop musky fishing or walleye yeah. fishing or whatever they're, they're owning it they own it mm -hmm. because of because of scope and it's like i mean they didn't i mean they don't have to tinker with their baits from now to whatever they're catching they're catching these fish in the middle of nowhere yeah. Right. And fine. I get where Bart's coming from too, with like the advantage. Cause it's like, okay, you can't compare like back in the day to now. It's not the same. When, the, when the guys started flipping, you wouldn't take, you wouldn't take Wayne Gretzky and put him in the NHL. Now you get a shit kicked in. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It, like it's not the same game. Even. Yeah. yeah. No. So it's, it's like, you, you know, you take, you take fucking Rick. Like Klon dude, these, these live the scope, grinder of there's this. a very real chance. These live scope fish were not out there to this level back when they were catching them on the Maybe. ledges or flipping the bank. But who yeah, knows? There's a chance, but we have no idea. Cause we're constantly learning. Yeah. Right. And the so fish are going like, to adapt. It's nature. It's just so hard to compare. Like I know that's everyone wants to draw these comparisons, right? Of like, this guy was so good and now he's like, not, well, I don't know. Like what it is. Like, I, I, but to your point too, Ryan, like it is jarring to think about like, I, it was just jarring to me to think about like how do all these 20 plus years traveling seasoned pros get stomped on by a 19 year old kid. And like, not well, even like, they, so be, guess, get, guess like another honest reason for that. Guess why? Because Why? instead of for five months when fish are in prime position to be live scoped from yeah. September through January, totally that kid spent roughly 120 to 150 days on the water after yeah. work, whatever in between, going, I'm going to look. Yeah. And all those other guys went, I got the off season off. And to me, yeah. that's also almost like, I never understood that about pro fishing, how guys were just like, no, nah, now I go hunt for five months. Like I get, you have other things you like to do and everything, but it's like, dude, if you're a pro, like think of baseball, basketball, hockey, whatever you want to talk about it. I do After the season, there's a month or maybe a month where maybe go on a vacation. They just don't do anything. Don't touch anything or whatever. But when they're yeah. in their prime years that they're a pro athlete, yeah, they go on family vacations and stuff in the off season, but like they're going to the gym two or three, you know, a, every day. They're yeah. playing at golf. They're playing a practice nine holes. They're putting over here. They're doing this. They're constantly training to be better. How in bass fishing for however long was it like? Oh, it's off season. I'm not going to do that. It's like what? Well, I think the, and then the all these kids was seasonally they were still fishing seasonal patterns. They weren't fishing a technique that could be dominant at most times of the year. On well, and I, yeah. And these say, these <laughs> I mean, other, plain and simple, these other you're not guys, you're not going to learn how to when, deep crank in the middle of the fucking winter. I'll tell you that for free. 
Well, but I'm saying the last four or five years when they knew this was going to be a thing, this is where these kids took advantage. Cause like yeah. I talked to Pangrak yes. about this. Yeah, okay. And he That's said valid. that he talked he talks to a lot of these guys, call them sure. and stuff to have them on the podcast. And he said, <laughs> You want to know the funniest thing is every time I call a guy who's a pro or been a pro for the last five or ten years, and they're like back home, they're at home. When I call those other kids. I can hear them on the water and I'm like, Oh, are you on the water? And they're like, yeah, I'm just scoping around. And they're like, Oh, where are you at? And they're like, Oh, I'm out on this. Like I've never been here. So I'm just looking around. They're just seeing right, how it yeah. sets up and like, it's, they're it's putting in all yeah. this pre-practice and time on the water. And like, that's the thing. All these guys are like, well, they have no time on the water. Yeah, they do. They've put a ton in over yeah. the last three or four years. Like people are acting like Trey McKitty came out of nowhere that dude go ask Illinois BFLs in Toyota series about that kid. Cause he won almost every single one of them yeah. in the last three years. Here's a cool thing too. Hayes Baldwin, a good fish ice fishing buddy of ours and just a good buddy of the whole pods. He's been on the pod before him and Billy yeah, Linder. Trivia with Hayes. What? Trivia with Hayes. Yeah. Trivia with Hayes. Uh, the Linders got contracted to shoot some high school junior bass national championship. And like, it might even been Idaho. And, uh, Hayes went down there cause he was helping them with probably travel or film stuff or whatever. Um, and Billy and Hayes got to watch Trey like fish for the whole day. And I think even Hayes went out with them when Trey was like 15, 14 or 15 and Hayes fishes seriously. I'm telling you like almost every day, multi-species walleyes, a lot of bass, everything. He said he was blown away. He's never, he's never, been around someone that efficient or just great at fishing like trey was when he was 15 dude and yeah. now he's 19 so it's like it, hayes uses live scope more than anybody i know walleye fishing every single day for walleyes and he just knows he was like yeah trey is an absolute nuke at live scope but that dude is a hammer he was a hammer way before this as well so that maybe that's that's something to at least Same add credibility. Thing. Like, think, think of John thing. Hoyer. John Hoyer was winning everything for years, dominating. Then these yeah. past few years, he became one of the best scopers in the world, along with Dewey Helm. Now they're winning everything. Yeah. And look, yeah. I don't think it takes somebody that couldn't compete at the pro level and makes them a pro. Yeah. Yes. But I think I that's the common misnomer. I okay. think it makes it more level. But like people are like, well, I could just buy it and become a pro. It's like, no, you Do can't. It. You're Do still it. not that good. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I think that's the case, but it's like, fuck, but it is man. still I, jarring. Like it, you said, it, it is puts, still jarring. It puts them on another fucking level real quick. That's like alarming. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is. Yeah. But these, it's just, they've shown how good they are. And that's the thing. They're breaking records everywhere, and I, they I are, still but think it's... But the only problem with it, the only problem that I see and that people are going to keep picking at is that they aren't putting up these kind of numbers in tournaments where they aren't scoping. But uh, Like if Trey again, McKinney was... comes in and, and catches him on a fucking frog, no one says anything other than, God, this kid's the next fucking, you know... KDD. My my one question to this, Ryan, would be because I don't know the hunting industry or whatever, say a correlation would be there. Yep. But say we never knew this technology or these fish or anything existed, how efficient it would be. So like, would it be fair to just be to like make those comparisons or something? Say like some dude who's sitting with a, a uh, bow and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they're like a guy comes in with a rifle and it's super good. And you're like, well, these guys, the guy with the rifle could never compete with the bow. Well, you're even, like, do you I, know that? I, I was just, like, I, could I just they go back too, and just do that? Yeah. I just think it's too different. Like to draw like that type of comparison. You know what I mean? It but is like, different. I but just, I, maybe I, what Adam's trying to say yeah. is, is even like a lot of young guys, like the hunting public in general, they opened up the floodgates along with a few other people of being like, Dude, you don't need to just sit in your 20-foot deer stand over a food plot. You can go to any public land, do map work, put in your scouting, and you can kill. And we're going to show you exactly yes. how we do it. And well, they here, literally here. do it. They're young dudes. They're aggressive. Yep. They hunt on the ground. They hunt aggressive. Here's and what I would say are like, oh, that. you can't just roll up to public land and kill bucks. 
They do it across yeah, the whole country. They do. And but here's what I here's here's the comparison I would draw and why it's different. Because okay. the hunting industry has head and shoulders above the fishing industry already for years and decades been regulating technology because hunting has always been under the microscope of ethics and shit like that. Okay. Hey, this is killing. So like, for instance, thermal imaging comes out, maybe what, 10, it's been, actually been around a long time. It's been regulated since the beginning. Okay. Yeah. It is illegal to use for big game hunting. Period. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you were going to like, and it like, there's not really like hunting competitions per se. Right. You know, may, like there's some like predator, like coyote shit, like there's not like tournaments. Right. Sure. So it's a little different. Like people aren't competing head to head that way, but it's a lot of dick swinging. Right. So it's like, if, if you, if you put, I don't know, some, some of these hunters that have been doing it forever. Right. And hunting is one yeah. of those you things. Just that pop it, a fuse or something. Soby. No, 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 my, my so my, like something my where you know light my Dakota lithium. It, it has taken died. guys, you know, a lot of time to learn stuff, right? Yeah, techniques, whatever. Now, like, if you were gonna say, well, this new technology is available. Granted, like I said, there's a lot more rules, right? Like when when you can hunt or do whatever. But if you were using like a th a thermal scope at night, yeah, you'd kill a shitload of big bucks. Tell you that. Yeah. For free. First day you use it. <laughs> yeah. It's that easy. You know what I mean? That is true. That's a that's a good comparison as it's well. That, like and that that's like literally putting technology in the hands. Yeah. Do you still have to be a good hunter? Well, yeah, I guess technically you need to know where deer live. <laughs> it's a good comparison. If I just walked out in my backyard with a thermal scope, I will shoot zero deer for sure. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, man, so, that's that's an interesting and, that, and good comparison. It's just like I don't know. I I just think it's not the same thing. But when you look at it through that lens, you're like, okay, I'm taking a piece of technology, highly fucking effective, and I'm gonna go do something like that with it. Well, yeah, it's illegal because it literally is that good. But so yeah. is hunting at night for deer. So <laughs> you know, I don't fucking know how do you even. It's not. It's really hard to compare, I guess, but. As far I'm as just, a piece of technology, I'm just more that... of saying like the I I think the the one one of the arguments that just always bugs me with it now that's popping up is the they wouldn't catch them without scope because like I mean we're not gonna know for a while because we'll put guys it this are way gonna, they're gonna keep using it as long as it'll win but the thing I is agree. is like we had seen Ben Milliken on YouTube win a bunch of ways without scope. And catch a bunch of big fish with before it. Trey McKinney's won a lot of tournaments doing other things too. Like these but guys until are good they do, anglers. people will always say that. Yeah, but like I don't think it deserves an asterisk because then I'll just go, yeah, cave or I'll go, yeah, this guy won this many tournaments before live scope. But it always will. There's the... like there, but it, but there, it is there, there is that you comparison. Get what I mean? There's like... going to be an argument like of. Okay, so what? KVD won 30 tournaments before half the people he was fishing against didn't suck? Like, you know? Yeah. Like, the competition right now is way higher than it's ever been in terms of people who are good. Yeah, so I agree. I just... I, right I think the main the hostility right now is there's a big changing of the guard happening in fishing right now. It happened 20 or so years ago, too. And there's a bunch of guys realizing that five years ago when this started becoming a thing and they were like, I'm going to be a manly man and I'm going to fish maybe, shallow and docks and stuff. Maybe and now they're going to lose their job to 19 year olds. But maybe it is because fishing is a sport. It's a, it's a sport of longevity though. Like it's not like pro football or something like that where these guys turn like 30 years old and they're like tapping out. Yeah. Like there's guys there's on the elite series that are like 70, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But that's always kind of been a thing about fishing. That's been interesting too, is back in, in the day, guys usually didn't hit their prime pro fishing until they're like 45. That was usually like an age right, where if they it was started like, in their twenties. Yes. Like when they hit 40 or 45, that was usually like their true prime when they really started open up, opening up a can of worms and owning people. If they had, if they had that 
you know, right. but granted, like every sport, like people are getting better at younger ages. I get that. But when uh, I just think it's hard because like you're, you're, you're overnight changing this, this sport from what it has been for so long to like literally jumping into an overdrive level of you have to be young and adaptable to compete or get fucked. I also, but I also think this new way has a way bigger chance of non endemic sponsorships and excitement and everything for people to make more money and make the whole industry better. Why do you get way more people into fishing now? Let, let me, let me, let me, let me get it. A bathroom break. But how, I want to. I want to hear your reasoning on that. Yeah, and we can get into that in a second. But it's like it is, it, it, and and it maybe is because of like fishing being a sport that like guys don't get rich fishing. You know what I mean? Like these pros that have been pros well, for a long time. I I wouldn't necessarily. There there's a lot of there's a top ten percent that have become very wealthy from fishing. In how long? In how long? Over their careers, I don't know, 10, 20 years. Exactly. 10 to 20 years. But I'm not saying off of tournament winnings. I'm saying they would go win tournaments and then tell you they won it on this bait and they would sell that bait that they get this royalty money off of down your throat exactly. for years. Exactly. But these kids like are you, coming you, to you and just going, I'm going to take your lunch money with a piece of technology that you could also buy. And guess what? I'm better than you. Yeah, but you drew a direct comparison to like golf. If you win a golf tournament, how much money do you win? Oh, like, I don't know. Well, it depends if it's oh, a major so or not. Million dollars. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like that. So, somebody might come in and have a badass career for five years, ten years, and they fucking spin out, and that's it. And then more people come in and kick their ass. Why, why do you think that? But they were able to have a career, make a shitload of money, do all this stuff, right? Because they were good for a short period of time. Why, why yeah. do you taking guys 10, 20 years to make a career of winnings on a bass circuit? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even if they're yeah. winning. Well, yeah. I mean, with sponsors stuff too. I mean, you were, there was the so statement how you, of not a lot of people have made a lot of money fishing. And I'm like, well, there's quite a few millionaires out there, but right. Yeah. But, but it's taken a lot, a lot of, people, of years to get to that. The, there's a lot they of people come in and sign out, a contract too. for $20 million to fish for a season. No, yeah. and that's because it's that's also because there's no like union or whatever PA and all that sort of stuff. So it's completely different there. It's right, hard. but but that's what I'm saying is like these these guys that are so butthurt about it. It's because they've had these long established careers. They're guys that were at the top of the industry. Yeah, that for, didn't adapt, and they're getting mopped. Right, they they're getting adapt. mopped. They but, got comfortable. They did the same thing for 20 years. That's like working a bank job and just checking in, checking in, checking in, checking in. And people are like, here's Microsoft Excel. And then for two or three years, they're like, wow, this guy's still inefficient. They go, oh, he didn't even bother to learn it. Sorry, Jerry. We were going to give you retirement in five years, but you're literally fucking worthless to us now. Bye. Like, I, I don't feel bad for guys when it comes to a professional sport. Like, that's, you didn't want to adapt and stuff. Like, dude, like, that's your own fault. That's like getting old and out of shape and being like, well, I would wish I could get my 10th or my 20th. Like, I mean, for example, like LeBron James right now, longest, most longest longevity of a career ever for a pro athlete being at the top. Dude stays in insane shape, doesn't get injured, takes great care of himself, whatever the whole deal. Keeps making the money. That would be like someone who after 10 years had a catastrophic or after 10 years had no injuries or anything, but then the three point shot got here and they were like, I don't need that. I'm going to keep shooting in the post. And then four years later, the NBA is like, yeah, so we're a pretty three heavy league now. And they're like, yeah, but I'm not. And they're like, well, there's not really a spot for you anymore. Bye. Right. But you're talking about one pro. You're not talking about every year. All of these guys are that good. Well, yeah, you go to the NBA now, and it went from everybody was shooting 30% three to now, like, average is, like, 40. That's been over the last five years. Like, it's a there's correlations in other sports to, like, more efficiency, higher scoring, higher weights, the, the whole deal. It's the same right, thing. but you, you don't see in sports where you're like, oh, we have this veteran team over here, and we have a team of all these rookies. 
Mm. Yeah, you do. Golden and State. All of the rookies kick the shit out of all the veterans Golden State. all the time. Every Golden tournament. State. Golden State. When Golden State won their titles. MJ, when he came up. First few years right. didn't You're quite get there. You're talking about individual teams. Individual teams. This is an entire fucking league, dude. I mean, yeah, I I'm just saying, look at the NBA right now. Like the last few years, I, I don't know, like young teams are winning more. I mean, NFL Chiefs. Patrick well, you just Mahomes, you just like, like said LeBron. You just talked about LeBron. <clears throat> He's not a rookie. I was just all. saying he has this long career because he keeps adapting and going with the modern times. That'll there'll be some elite series guys like that too. Some when? long guy who's been around and when? he's going to keep his career because he adapts. I don't know, Justin Ooh. Atkins has been there a handful of years. Fighters doing fine. There's a bunch. Yeah, of, here's how, the how other do you thing. Finish up. How do you people finish are up like the last saying they're there. loading right now? There's a bunch of guys who got paid the last two events. Zeldane got paid the last two events. Like sure didn't make the cut. I'll tell you that. Yeah, he did. Literally made the top fifty cut. 50 okay yeah 10 grand paycheck that's what everyone says to like get paid to like make your living right i don't know i just think it's it's separating so much of like that shit the veteran shit from the rookie stuff immediately that it's just it's not you know what the difference between a sixth place check and a 49th place check is on the elite series right no i don't tell me it's it's roughly twelve and a half thousand dollars Okay. So getting a check is like a very big deal, and it doesn't really matter where you finish unless you win. So like well, that's that's it, what I'm none saying. Of the veterans like, are gonna win, dude. Zaldane's doing fine. These other guys are doing fine as long as you're cashing a check, you're good. But Sobi, what I was saying with the growing the sport and everything, there's more people watching fishing. All the analytics are up. Social TV viewership length, everything is up. And I think it simply even comes down to the fact of you have girlfriends, wives, whoever, um, like paying rat gave me the example, like his new, his girlfriend, um, she doesn't watch fishing or anything, but they were hanging out and he just flips it on to go check on what's going on on FS one. And she's like, all oh, fishing and kind of walks away, but then comes back and she's like, what are they doing? And he's like, oh, this is like the forward facing stuff you heard about. And they're showing the screen. And he's like, that's a fish. That's his bait. She's chasing it. And she's like, what? And then she sat down and watched for 35 minutes. It was like, this shit looks fun. Oh. I want to do that. Because mm -hmm. mm. a lot of people don't have the attention span to go just cast at nothing for an hour. So suddenly fishing is getting a lot more intriguing for a lot of people. Like, remember how our number one sales pitch for the Vexlar for the last decade was? It's like a video game, but fishing. And it is. It is. It is. It's, it's fun. the same thing happening in open water. It's freaking fun. And, it, and I guess that makes, yeah, that's a good example too, because like, yeah, when you watch a Vex, it's literally fun. But like, if you just had a bobber and a cork and an ice hole, you'd be like, this sucks like a lot. <laughs> yeah. This is like not that. I fun wouldn't at go all. do it. And that's like, you know. And that's OG like, maybe technology. I'm not a fishing enthusiast or purist, like the people say, but like, I don't care. Like, I like catching fish. <laughs> if I want to just be outside, I'll go do a bunch of other things. Golfing's the, fun, hiking's fun. The like, one weird thing is, is just you bringing up like it might bring more non endemics into the sport, or just might bring more people in the sport. That was a good example. And I was just like, I don't know. I just always, this is kind of a different topic, but same topic. I never, I just never understood why like NASCAR has such a wicked large fan base. I understand cars going fast, it's a race, big motors, loud, blah, blah, blah. But it's a lot of that, you know. I don't know. It, it's I feel like it's a lot of the same fan base that might translate over to, to bass fishing. But why is there a lot of drama in NASCAR? A ton, I believe, yeah. I don't know a ton about NASCAR, but that's what I've heard. But those races are like, you know, whatever, a hundred laps all going. No, left. I'm saying sorry, I'm saying drama between competitors. Sure, maybe that's why. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. what, sorry. what, what brings I, I, almost I, like I, fighting. Caught on to what you were referencing after I said that. Yeah. But what I'm refer what I'm referencing is like, how does someone become a NASCAR fan? You don't grow up racing cars. You don't grow up. It's almost like if you race, 
competitively, you are a part of a pretty elite small niche group of people that actually do it, but it has such a wide fan base, just kind of how they say, like, you know, it's almost like it's non, it's not relatable. Now when you watch these guys with $50,000 worth of stuff, it's kind of like, well, guys do watch that in NASCAR. They have, you know, $300,000 cars. They're ripping around, but they never go racing. It's because they're, they've built like a culture around it as far as watching it. Like, mm -hmm. because it's easy to watch, like it's Mm -hmm. on TV, like, and they, they are like, they, the uh, broadcast of it is exciting. They're good and, at it. And maybe, like you said, the, the the rules are simple. The guy that finishes first wins. It's a race. Everyone is trying to to like everyone knows how to race work. So maybe maybe it's easy to understand. We're like even like yeah, the whole MLF, even Bass, like even my parents, like I they're like you know you weigh weigh the, you weigh every Bass or you weigh don't what well, dude, the or... mlf thing fucked up this whole deal i know so we bad. won't we won't go into that but, but i do think those like, other yeah. sports the leg up they have people also get drawn in by like the the money aspect of it to it like you you win some of these nascar races it's in it's millions right sure same with golf it's like crazy like that's i think that's a big draw too it's like this prestigious well, there's, heart there's you know what one i mean league But the thing is, it's just so weird. I don't know. I'm so removed from that sport, but I want to know more about it because it's like, if people are into fishing, I can understand that because at some point in their life, they've probably been fishing. If people are into watching the MLB, at some point, they probably played T-ball. People Mm -hmm. are into the NBA. At some point, they probably played basketball or shot hoops in the driveway, tried to dunk on a mini hoop. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, There's at least some relatability there where it's like, I, I never got into NASCAR and I don't really know many people who are into it. Cause it's like, I mean, I never raced cars. You know I, mean? I think right. it's a much different culture thing down South or like when you get it more is, around. Yeah. But it, it could also be something like as that. simple as for a lot of people, fishing is not competitive. Mm. Yes. Like you play a game of basketball in the driveway. Mm. You don't have to be a pro for it to be competitive. But dude, you know, I think you could see a lot of like that. I like, think you oh, could see a lot of it changing. In the next several years, I don't know. I I just mean you're like you're talking about getting new people in, non endemic. Yeah, because I think these people just when think... they just go and soak a bob with a worm, it's not a tournament. You know yeah. what I mean? But also, but also when they drive down I thirty five, it's not a race. Yeah, I drive a lot, and it's not a race for me. No, it's but it is for if my I, girlfriend, but, it, but not but the, me. The, just the thought process of a race, it's a it's a competition. Yeah, sure. For a lot of sure. people, when they think fishing, they don't think competition, tournament. Co- you know what I mean? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I, I think when they say fishing, I think a lot of people just NASCAR generally race. don't. I don't think a lot of people generally know fishing tournaments happen. I think True. they think yeah. of a fishing tournament more like the JCs Brainerd Ice Tournament or the one that was on Cedar where like you show up, you fish out of one hole, you catch a first perch, you win two grand. But then you know, on, uh, to play devil's advocate, Ryan, like, and I'm not a part of this demographic either, but mm-hmm. when you say golf, I don't think tournament. I yeah. don't. I do Nor not. Do think, I. And I, I think drinking beer, hanging out with friends. I think I think a slow game of people are out on the course just golfing, just out there right. smoking see, a cigar I, and golfing. see, I would say the complete opposite. Are, and those guys are signing one hundred fifty dollars Saudi, one hundred fifty million dollars Saudi deals now. Right, yeah. but what, but like yeah. for me, if I think golf. I think fucking watching golf on TV. Really, I. I don't golf. I've like I literally I don't golf, golf either. Places. I don't I golf, either. golf for my birthday like three years ago. I think I think that's the only time he ever went golfing. That was probably the only legit actual round of golf I've ever put gone and done in my life. Yeah. So why yeah. does golf have such a large fan base? Because of relatability. Well, why does NASCAR have such a large fan base? Show me. This just... is this is where I'm thinking that the tournament bass fishing thing could see an uptick. Professional golf was stagnated for a long time in terms of viewership and everything. And then a big push happened and it was podcasts and YouTube golf. And over the last five to 10 years, it has exploded. Even, even probably five years, probably in viewership and people watching it. So what I'm starting to think now is, is what we could see is with, Milliken, I think, being kind of the first one, 
um, being a proficient YouTuber who fishes all different species and people know him as a fisherman getting to these tournaments. Now mm. people are like, oh, this is a thing. And now, oh, the Elite Series is at Lynx St. Clair. Oh, they come see it and they're like, wow, this guy's pretty cool. I didn't know about him. And their eyes get open. Similar yeah. to a bunch of people who got brought into the PGA Tour or like who would have never watched it, but they watched all these podcasts and stuff about it because they genuinely liked the activity and they never kept up to the professional level. So I think we could see that in the coming years, but yeah, I, I think the, the moral of the story is like, they're going to let it go absolutely wide open this year. And then they'll probably regulate it the year following. And then they will have a direct apples to apples comparison to say, here's what happens if we let this ride. And here's what happens if we do it this way. Yeah. And then they're going to just really hope everyone like, let's all just stop with the negativity online and the, these people wouldn't catch them, blah, 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 blah. Just like everybody chill, realize you're watching steroid era baseball. Let's pop a couple beers and have a fun time. Cause you're going to see some just, really just big fish caught. Watch Enjoy it, it. Watch it for what it is. It's yeah. really freaking cool. Cause you, I guarantee you won't see this again. It's going to be really sick. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee that you will not see it again. How it's going now. Oh okay, yeah. Here's, here's a question for you two right here. Yeah. Who releases a press release first that it's regulated? BASS MLF. It'll be BASS because MLF. Oh shit! I can't say anything negative about them. Just kidding. Uh, MLF. I can. <laughs> yeah. You, you go MLF, ahead, Ryan. <laughs> you think MLF will regulate it first? I th I think Bassmaster will regulate it first because of the initiative that they're taking into like looking into it. Yeah. But I feel like MLF will throw out some shit totally unfounded for their rules. <laughs> 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 ditto <Yeah. laughs> um that's what i think so wow what would have led you to I think to, i have to fish a professional <laughs> level tournament with mlf in the next month so i'm not obligated to say anything about the organization based off a contract i have set signed um, so I cannot make the joke that I was going to make, but someone else could potentially make it if they thought the same way I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do some research quickly. Yeah, I don't know. You can maybe figure it out. I don't know why you could ever think that, but uh, I do. I do. I don't know who will put it out first, to be honest. That'll yeah. be interesting. I, I mean, that'll I think, be a big jump in a direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I, I wonder. The, yeah. The fact that Bassmaster has publicly said that they are literally like actively looking into this and that they like they have interest in making a change. And I think there's a lot of pros that do, too. And even the pros that are in support of it want some sort of change. I just think the one thing I would really like to see Bass say because I think we all know this is a real thing and just, I don't know, maybe there's a bunch of old jack wagon yahoos who don't, but it's just come out and say, you're not going to get rid of it. Cause sure. we know you're not like, you're yeah. not going to get rid of it. The sponsors but are I can dogs see, and everything are way too big. I can so see just, where they're like, we're just going to wait till we make our actual decision to say anything. To not and I get that too. Off, you know? Yeah. So it'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I think we've beat this to death. Uh, there's a lot of other podcasts and social media outlets that are doing the same. So I don't think that, uh, this will be the last you'll hear this in the coming months. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I'm sure people are, and this will be probably the last we dive into it this hard. It's just after those two Texas events, I did yeah. not think we were talking about it this long, but after the two no. Texas events, I was like, I am fired up and I want to talk about this. I, I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not subscribing to what you said. Adam, I think we might bring it up again and we might do some more deep dives if we have to, just because this is, this is the current state of fishing that we're in. And obviously this podcast covers a variety of things and it's a lot of shenanigans and BS and good stories, but we also cover current events and, and current yeah, things that are happening in the fishing world. And this is like, yeah. this is what's happening. And, and, and like I, Adam said, we're in the steroid era of baseball yeah. and, and we're just, we're going to comment on it and follow it just like everybody else. And I will say us, our our like general friend group included is like i think we all like we all use forward facing 
Yeah. I think it's super fun to like use. Like it's bad. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, I think yeah. we're all very pro. Like this is a cool thing. It's good for fishing. You learn a shitload. It's cool. Yeah. You learn it, a yeah. lot fast. And that's yeah, why these cool. young guys are catching up to a bunch of old guys is because the old guys are not using it to their advantage. Right. But it also opens your eyes to like what's capable if you are really good at it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, which is cool. So, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see how this season plays out. I'll say that. And, and one thing I want to say too, because I feel like this always gets thrown out there that it's like, Oh, young guys are good. at it, Old guys aren't. I know a lot of young dudes with forward facing sonar who are not good at it at all. And even I'm, yes. I'm included. And I know a lot of old guys who are really good at it. So I, yep. I hate how they always make a comparison just to young guys deal. It's just whoever's good at it is good. You gotta at it. Whoever, learn it. whoever puts more time into it is better at it. Whoever looks at a map, lake map is better. At it. Whoever does, yeah. whoever side scans more is better at side scan. You know what I mean? And seeing yeah. different. But I think we would all like, say, we would all say that it's like, there is a learning curve to it. Like oh, I didn't yeah. just get Tremendous. a mega live and just go out there and beat their ass. <laughs> well, that's why, like we brought up earlier with the Chronicles. We've filmed a lot of different bites doing it now. Yeah, it's taken like, us. A, it is a generally years the same to get to thing. Where we're like we're doing a lot of different things with it now, but also every year the crappie chronicles, you're seeing more and bigger big crappies. Yeah, yeah because we're getting better and better and better at doing it. Yeah, so it's like yeah, that's it's a real thing. Like there's not people all of a sudden just buying it, going catching fifteens and sixteens everywhere. No. No, we watch people that have it that catch aren't good. And Seven and it injuries. is exciting. It's exciting to go to a new place and feel like you have a chance. And that's, that's the biggest thing. Ice fishing. Like it is yeah. really cool. Like you can walk on a brand new lake that you might have seen a good r- report on, and you might not catch skunk. You know, you might not catch dick, but you might go there and you might put something together and catch some fish or catch some really nice fish. Mm-hmm. If you're proficient at using it, or you just put your more time, drill more holes, keep looking, drill more holes, keep looking or keep fishing. Like where in the past, I feel like I could have never gone to just no name lakes and ever even had a hope or a prayer of catching anything. Right. It is cool. It gives you, it gives you opportunity to explore. Definitely. It's fun. Yeah. Sick. All right. Well, let's, I mean, we're, we're running long here, but I say we just, we just run it. Eh? I mean, we could, or we can just save it. I'd say we I, save it. We I save think we it. Save. We I think this is, uh, we were planning on doing more fun stuff, but I feel like that was a good talk. Yeah. yeah. If you hung on this long, thanks. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're, we're just hitting no, a three we, hour we, mark and it, it is. I hope you all. all <laughs> and comment below, seriously, comment below your thoughts, your feelings, chime in because this is like, you know, none of us are experts on, FFS. None of us are experts on any of this. We are very versed outdoorsmen, but this is just kind of our raw thoughts and feelings on what's happening mixed with some shenanigans from fresh meat to Maggie, the one shot at Chad and everything else under the sun we freaking covered. So chime in your thoughts and we appreciate you guys coming out and listening. Yeah. So this has been another episode of pass the barb. Thanks for, for making it this far. If you did, Uh, Be sure to subscribe um, and, you know, send us uh, uh, some ratings on whatever podcast platform you're listening to and uh, catch you next time. Peace. Peace.